you look at the Griffins running backs today, there are a number of talented ones on the roster. Donovan Malloy returns after missing that game in Laurier, and this guy is the bell cow back, we'll call him, for the Griffins. But there's going to be three running backs rolled through series by series. Isaiah Smith is still coming back from that major injury he sustained last season, trying to get confident on it. And... My breakout player of the season for the Griffins is Caleb Sargent. This guy has been really good, is up there among not only the OUA rushing leaders, but the U Sports or Canadian University football rushing leaders, has a high yards per carry average. Really like how he's low to the ground. Keep an eye on number 27 today, but Donovan Malloy will start, and you'll see the other running backs rotated through. Yeah, you go with Malloy, Smith, and now all of a sudden Caleb Sargent, who, by the way, was the Griffins offensive and special teams player of the week last week at Laurier. It's now a three-headed monster under behind, behind our in center for the golf offense. But the McMaster offense, it's a whole different story. Keegan Hall, yes, McMaster just won in two through three weeks coming into week four. But Keegan Hall has been one heck of a quarterback. He's put up a lot of yardage, but in talking to defensive coordinator Matt Berry, he said that a lot of that yardage has come because the Marauders have been behind in games. They led early in the season against Laurier that first game of the year at McMaster, but kind of fell behind, excuse me, as that game went along. So about 70% of the time, the Marauders are putting the football in the air. Part of that, I think, is game plan. Part of that is because they have been behind. But ultimately, I think you need to force McMaster to beat you on the ground because they have haven't shown that they can run the football consistently. Keegan Hall has made some plays with his arm through the air, and I think the Griffin defense is going to be prepared and show him a bunch of different looks to confuse the quarterback. And speaking of the Griffin's defense, here it is. It is the Highway 6 Bowl Classic, and the guy on the Griffin's defense that might make the biggest difference in this game was number 52. It definitely could be Eunice Larry. This guy has been a stat sheet stuffer, I'll call him, for the University of Guelph Griffins. And today, I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret. He's going to be playing some defensive end because Matt Berry, the defensive coordinator, believes that he's athletic and that Guelph can take advantage of a young right tackle in his first year for the McMaster Marauders. So look for Eunice Larry to play more defensive end today. He can play linebacker as well, but this guy is ultra athletic. He pops off on every game tape that you're going to watch and see him here today. He's going to be a difference maker. Yeah, a nightmare for quarterbacks all over the field. Where we stand up for stand down defense. We'll actually have John Rush coming on to the broadcast here around the midway point of the first quarter so let's look forward to that it's another highway six bowl well McMaster coming up after the break Were both our mics off? Okay. I didn't know if we, I looked at my mic, I'm like, I don't know if I have this turned on. All good. Thanks, fellas. So are we coming back after this?
looking live again at a sold out stadium here, the beautiful campus of Alumni Stadium, the beautiful campus of the University of Guelph and Coach Potasic and his McMaster Marauders provide the competition for the Guelph Griffins here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. My name is Peter Cobb and sitting next to me, you know him as the wizard from Wallaceburg. He is Mr. Sean Patrick Moynihan and Mr. Moynihan, you talk about implications. This is a big one, Pete. The two and one Guelph Griffins come in here facing McMaster at one and two. McMaster, a couple of tough losses thus far uh, against Laurier and against Queens, two perennial powerhouses in the OUA. But I'll tell you, Pete, there is excitement galore around this Guelph Griffin team. You know, you and I were talking before the game, and we had a great conversation uh, with Coach Potasic. And, uh, you know, Keegan Hall, uh, their quarterback, Sean, you know, he was waiting in the wings, and he's six foot five. 230 pounds we just call him sir he is a big man pete and he's been on fire this uh mcmaster team likes to pass the ball he leads the oua in passing yards yards per game 299 he's second in completion percentage at 70 percent he has wow. been the real deal for mac but pete we know on the other side of the ball this double-headed monster oh, of guelph McCray and Abood have ab absolutely been on fire this year, rotating in and out, and just a great graphic up right now. Um, Going to be just an absolute game. Uh, Guelph, offensive yards per game, you saw it. And what I like about this stat, Pete, passing yards and rushing yards are just about even. It's been a balanced attack from the Guelph Griffins this year. Well, and, and you and I had a chance to talk to, I was joking with uh, there's a new marshal in town and he he was rather giddy knowing that his dad and his grandpa were tuning in us in and and just loved it and tristan abood it, really you almost have a have a license for that right arm because it, it is a gun my and, goodness and pete this year i find tristan has been surgical finding that man over the middle more great patience and to many surprise, has tucked the ball a couple of times with big gains. But Pete, back to Marshall McCray. Marshall McCray has scored a touchdown in 11 straight ball games for Guelph. He has played in only 11 ball games for Guelph. So this just promises to be a marquee matchup on OUA TV today. Well, we're about ready to get it underway and uh, getting set to kick off are the Griffins and back deep uh, i was looking on my score sheet number 27 brandon ward is back there for the marauders uh along with number his next number up isaiah shields number 28 and uh here we go folks kickoff is high and deep and ward's gonna pick it up around his 12 yard come out here to the left stops makes one man miss makes two oh, and a nice shoestring tackle there number 47 sean pete you want to believe drew kosak a linebacker got in wrapped him up it looked like for a moment he had a he had a seam up the left side and here comes the much heralded keegan hall Let's see what happens. They're going to have the ball at their own. The Marauders will start from their own 26-yard line here. As I mentioned, a little bit of a breeze coming out of the south. Uh, so the Marauders will have it at their backs to uh, begin this series. A little bit of motion in the backfield. Let's see what Hall has to deal with. He turns, fakes the handoff, back to throw, throws it out of the wing. Wide open out there, easy pitch and catch, and a first down for the Marauders up around the 44-yard line. Pete, that looked like uh, Jackson Cooling, fourth-year kid. As you said, though, Pete, lots of room out on the corner. And don't you think a key will be how much time does Keegan Hall get to throw the ball? Tremendous protection there for him. Yeah, we'll see whether the uh, Griffin uh, D-backs uh, kind of move up and say, hey, I'm going to see if you can beat me. I mean, four receivers out here to the left. He's looking left to throw it, and that ball is caught. Number 86, Sean. That's Nicholas Adair. That's their number one receiver this year. Again, great protection for Keegan Hall. 
Yeah, two passes, two first downs, and all of a sudden the football is in Griffin territory. So the Marauders, you talked about it on the way down when we were driving in, uh, a pass-heavy team, team, and we've seen a couple right away here. Three receivers to the left, two to the right, one setback, a little bit of motion. Back to pass, looking, looking. There's the screen pass, batted down. What a defensive play. Eight, number 92. Kobe Ofakuyu. Ofakuyu with a good play there, Pete. And we could hear the we could hear the Guelph video team next yeah, to us screaming they screen. They, they saw that, it coming. Yeah, they saw it is right. What now, a great he, This is second and long, and this is what you want to put a throwing quarterback or or any team in second and long and try to get them off the field. Coach uh, Pataki was worried about time of possession. He meant he felt that was the key to the game. We can't allow Guelph to go on long drives and keep us uh, keep the ball out of our hands. Back to pass looking, throws out in the flat. It's caught and going to be well short of the first down. It's going to be four or five short, Pete. Number 15, Nathan Kashama Aguirre, who's had a great start to this season, comes up with a tackle. Yeah, Priestner uh, made the catch on that. And here's something that uh, Coach Surya talked about how this uh, special teams of the Marauders can change field position and their punter put on a display uh, prior to during warm-ups. And there is a solid punt and going for the coffin corner. Let's see where they mark it out of bounds. Still moving forward, coming up about the 15-yard line. That's a, gain. That's a gain for Guelph P because, you know, in three-down football, it's all about flipping the field. And here comes... That Guelph yeah. offense. And Caleb Sargent at arms. And uh, number 66, Mr. Hosevar, and that offensive line. we got to show them a little bit of love. Talk to... Uh, we talked to the hosts of our family family. ahead of time. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to do more of a job, Pete, at highlighting that offensive line. They've been the unsung heroes, I think, thus far for this uh, Guelph production. All right, here we go. Fake handoff. Abood back to pass looking. Throws across the middle, and that ball is caught. And that is number 20. Uh, we'll get a number. 81, was it? Jacob Thomas. Thomas. You yeah, got it, Jacob Pete. Thomas. Jacob Thomas. He's had a great start this year. But Nice little button hook. No v -shon. Yeah. Uh, Genesis is this week, Pete, number 11, likely their leading receiver, but they certainly have more weapons. All right, there's the handoff up the middle and stuffing it uh, after a game. Look at that push. Oh, my. Pete, big number 98, Dominic Limonani. A nice tackle there and stuff that in the middle, and here comes that dreaded second and long. Yeah, probably second and seven now. Let's see... Uh, what uh, the Guelph offense have in mind. They got two receivers out to the left, two out here to the right. Even formation, Sargent still in the backfield. A little bit of motion here and there, and the handoff is to uh, Sargent and didn't fool anybody. A real fine defensive stand there by the Marauders. Malik Bolpeet got a hand on real early there and just closed that open hole. Number 97, make Malik Bolt. Yeah, playing running like uh, Usain Bolt, I'll tell you. He, I saw him uh, without his pads on, and he is a large human being. And you can see he got there a great shot, number 97. And he's got the long arms and made a heck of a defensive play there. All right. Here comes a Griffin punt. It's kind of an end-over-end end kick, and look out. That's going to be... Trying to get away from it to avoid the no yards and no flags because they were trying to get away. But excellent field position for these Marauders. Mc well, Micah Duchesne, Pete, with it, picked that ball up. But not only was it a, a, a terrible punt, but it also backtracked on him. Guelph had to retreat so there'd be no yards. And tremendous field position for McMaster. Yeah, this is what... Uh, Coach Surya was talking about uh, special teams really changing field position. We saw McMaster get a couple of first downs. We got a little bit of a delay here. 
player running off and uh, coming on. Surprisingly, Pete, they didn't wind the clock once the official sat the ball down yeah. and uh, really gave Mac an opportunity to, to get the right personnel on the, on the field. Just joining us, 11.07 to go here in the first quarter. McMaster and Guelph, big implications running the ball and just tripped up or that would have been a big gainer. Pete, Gonna that's, that's DeShane again, number 34. I wonder if that was number nine, Eunice Larry, getting an arm there. Boy, the, uh, he, he was one of the keys to the game by, from Justin Duncan. He reminds me of Micah Parsons. He can play linebacker, and uh, he can also, uh, you know, rush the edge. And they talked about maybe seeing him uh, play the edge today. All right, second down and about six, folks. Another key long distance down on second down. Hall surveys the situation. He turns, hands the ball off, and lots of running room and enough for a first down. And indicated there by number Micah 34. De Micah DeShane again, <laughs> yeah. Pete, and no question about it, this passing prone Mac really caught Guelph off guard there, Pete, for a nice scamper for six or seven. And you can see on the replay, huge hole wrapped up by number 55. That's Jack Cobb. Cobb. That's my boy, Jack Cobb. And he said he's going to put a lick on a couple of Marauders today, and let's see if that does happen. Fake handoff, back to pass, out in the flat, wide open out there, and lots of running room. First down and more. Brought down about the 18-yard line. Nice Anthony Mortuzo with, with the tackle, and I, I can't get Jackson a number. Cooling. I think it was cooling number two for uh, the Marauders. Pete, that was uh, number 13 too. Kyle simon Garen coming over from the far side to cut the legs out. Well, red zone possession here for the Marauders. They've got it at the 18-yard line of the Guelph Griffins. We're just underway. It's quarter number one in this huge OUA matchup. The Highway 6 Series. There's the handoff and trying to run left and good defensive play. Look at that gang tackling, Sean. You'll love to see that. That Coach time would love that. they wrapped up Duchesne that time, Peter. I'd tell you who was in on the tackle, but there was approximately seven Guelph Griffins in on that tackle. Well, I think Tumi Adenye was one of them. Adenye. A-D-E-N-I-E-Y-I. -E Tumi. All right, big play here, Sean. Second and eight. When do they get pressure? Do they send someone here? Uh, interesting. We talked about that earlier. There's the fake handoff. All kinds of time throwing at it. Caught and it's going to be short of the first down. So the button hook takes him down to about the, I'm going to say, 6, uh, 11 yard line. He's so going to be short, two or three, Peter. Yeah. So already decision time. I oh, get no. it. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're saying second and, uh, yeah. So it's going to be. That was a very kind mark yes, there on that was. play, Pete, because. Uh, Third and one, folks. Ball at about the nine-yard line. They need to get to the eight and a half, maybe, for a first down. So in comes. Lucas Berezzi, Pete. He's that third down quarterback, 200 pounds. They have him listed at 6'4". Right, number three. He's in the game now, and you just know he's going to quarterback sneak it. And he goes off tackle, and he's got the first down and more. And is finally brought down by Anthony Mortuzo, number two. The torpedo in on a play right off the bat, Pete. But red zone crunch time now for Guelph. First and goal, ball at the five-yard line. And uh, Griffin's uh, changing up some defensive personnel. And let's see what the uh, Marauder offense. Is it run or is it pass? We've got two receivers out here to the left. An extra lineman in the block. One setback and one receiver to the right. Hall mm. looks it over, turns, back to pass. Got all kinds of time. Throws it out here. Wide open. Touchdown, Marauders. Pete. Oh, my. That was a blown coverage there, Sean. Yeah, Kyle simon Garen just misread that. Adair is their number one guy. Yeah. He went to the corner and... Uh, he was wide open, Sean, and uh, 
Boy, there you could see that kicking game set up this. Uh, Absolutely, Pete. This um, flip the field. Play. It really did. Look at how and, open Adair is. And Pete, I'll tell you, Keegan Hall, as advertised, has been perfect so far. Well, certainly one of the things, he's had time to pass the ball, and you saw him dissect this Griffin defense. Um, here's the extra point. Looking at uh, Michael Horvat, number 21, the kicker. I don't know if he's related to Bo Horvat from Rodney, Ontario, Bo is. The great New York Islander. Yes, and former captain of the Canucks. And there is a good shot of Mr. Horvat, number 21. All right. Impressive start, Pete, for, for Mac. Of course, they call this the Highway 6 match. Yeah, I love that. You see that sign that uh, Scotty Fraser. Oh, for so, sure. I wonder whether he woke up in the middle of the night and went and took that down off a roadside somewhere. Oh, I was going to say he <laughs> got up in the middle of the night and made it. You know, Scotty. That's true. He's very creative. He's got a lot of magic markers. Yeah. He whipped that bad boy up in no time. Uh, that's what we're going to get him for Christmas, a yeah. set of magic markers. The all for, ever exciting. Oh, he's, he's a Scotty delight. Scotty Fraser. Scotty Fraser. Does, does a lot of work here he for does. the sports at, at Guelph. Really does. We, you and I, have been fortunate over the last 11 years to sit up here and watch this uh, team unfold. And we'll talk a little bit later about that uh, wall of honor, Sean, that we For uh, sure. had a chance to look at. Here's the kickoff, and it's a dandy. Getting it deep in his own uh, end zone and bringing it out, making a couple of people miss. Still standing on, on his feet, and finally brought down about the 40-yard line. Kyle is Simon Guerin. Number 13. What a fine run back. Good yes. starting field position for this Griffin offense. Pete, he got wrapped up there early, but spun off. Yeah. And what and great field missed. position. There's the great Eric Strons on the sideline. Side Boy, we Kicking had a coach. To talk to his mom today. and Still uh, helping out here at the University of Guelph. And it's truly a family, that's for sure. All right, Aboud surveys the situation, and he's back to pass. Look, throws the ball out on the flat and knocked out of bounds. And uh, going to be a penalty there on Ethan Stewart hitting uh, number 80. That's Harry Vardy, Sean. Well, v Vardy was in the white, Pete, and... And uh, number one there, uh, Stewart just took it. I says, I, got, I have an idea. I'm going to take a shot here. And that's a big one. 15 more. Watch where this ball gets marched. Here's your call from our referee. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the ball gets marched all the way to the MAC 48-yard line. Not what you want when your team has just scored the opening touchdown, and now the Griffins have it in your territory. First down, a boot. Pete, and look for William Arsenal, number five. Did not play last week. They're really excited with his progress. They hand off, look out, stepping up in the pocket, throwing it, got a man open, caught again. Is that Vardy again? It, it is, is Vardy. Wow. And again, Pete, that was Tristan Abu. Tristan yeah. stepped up. Avoided the rush, and you can see on the replay, Boy, got he, the ball to yeah. him, flicked that ball. He, you know, he threw that off his front foot and had really some mustard on it. That's a first down all the way to the 28-yard line, and the Griffins are rolling because McMaster had some pressure there. Abood's a big kid. He, he'd be tough to bring down. All right, two receivers to the left, one to the right. One setback, turn. Fake the handoff, back to pass, Abood looking, throwing, got a man wide open out there, touchdown! Griffins, what a pass! Is that William Arsenal out there, Sean? I think it's William Arsenal, number five, Pete. We just called his name a few minutes ago, but tremendous patience, and we do see a flag down. Uh-oh. And, it was and the, it's in that. Yeah, that holding area. Well, it was double, uh, the double move. Uh, what a shame, it's the illegal motion. Oh, that hurts. But uh, there you got an indication of the arm of Tristan Aboud. He put that as a frozen rope. A procedure penalty on Guelph there, Pete. And, you know, we have such a bird's eye view yeah. up here. We see that play developing, the double move. 
Arsenal to the corner, a boot stepping up, but negated by a penalty. First and 15 now. Three receivers to the left. One here in the slot to the right. Lone setback. Donovan Malloy in the backfield. In the backfield. He's going to get the ball and to the right. Look at him go. Busting tackles on. And he's got a first down. Oh. And Pete, what a hit he put on number one. Ethan Stewart. Stewart closed on him. <laughs> and Malloy put the shoulder down. And you'll see on our replay as he gets around the corner. I'm not going out of bounds. What a play. Well, Donovan Malloy. I think Lauren Pecan, number 89, threw a great block there. He was lined up in the tight end position. But again, the right side of that offensive line, you could have driven a semi through it. Well done. The O-line. Daniel Hockevar. Oh, yeah. You got to love him. Fake hand off, throw it in the flat, trying to get to the outside, and a real nice tackle there. Boy, he's getting a workout, Ethan Stewart, yes. number one. He made a nice Wrapped note. him up, or he may score on that play. Agreed. A gain of about three, maybe. Well, maybe two. Second and eight here. Ball on the 14-yard line of the Marauders. They have already gone down and scored. There's the fake handoff. And uh, getting it out there to number 88, Jared Tessier. And Tessier just couldn't escape Stewart's grasp. Tessie has scored in two straight games, too, Peter. Here comes Tristan Abood. Big play here. Back to pass. Got some time. Looking. Throwing. Got a man open out there. And it is out of bounds. He is out of bounds. What a play, though, yeah. Pete. I'm trying to get a number all the way up here. Yeah, that's as far away from us as you can get. Yes. Looks like uh, there's a... I thought it was 91, but it can't be. That's... He's got a little uh, bit of a limp going on there. Nice catch. We'll get a number. 81. Yep. You know, Jacob, 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 Jacob Thomas. 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 You, we can't afford to have him hurt. He's, uh, he's played so well for us. I'm kind of trying to walk it off over there. Field goal attempt. The kick is up. And it is good. And so Benjamin Lane. Yes. With 332 to go here in the first quarter, the Marauders hold a 7-3 lead. And we'll see their offense come out. We need a big defensive stop here, Sean. Pete, we talked about it, but it's all gonna be about pressure on that quarterback. You know, our, our, we were, we're on Rogers uh, 20, uh, Rogers 20, 20. Yeah, and we've got, uh, you know, OUA, Griff Vision TV. We, you can see us in multiple ways. It's just magical, yeah. and we thank all the viewers from, I'm sure there's lots of people at McMaster University uh, tuning us in today. You know, that's a good cue, Sean. I want to say thank you to Ember uh, Campbell and Kimberly Clark, Will Shua, Caitlin Boyd, Hugh Reichsfeld, our director, Neil White. How about producer, Matteo Cugliari? And, of course, we got Justin Twohand, Tomahawk Slam Dunk, Scotty Frazier, Mr. Sean Patrick Moynihan, and myself, Peter Cobb. All right, let's throw it down to Scotty Frazier. Joined now here at Field Rumble by John Rush, one of the most decorated Griffins of all time. John, welcome back home, or you stayed at home at the very least. Lots and lots to talk about your playing career. We'll get started with that CIS President's Trophy that as the top stand-up defense player of all of Canada, that year was capped off by a Yates Cup and such, such success for you here throughout your four five years as a player. Looking back, how long does it feel like it's been and also how quickly did it go by? Well, I think I think that's kind of the thing about being back here and, and seeing everybody and seeing the field and some of the players. It just, uh, it, it really seems like it was yesterday, but then when we actually count the years, you're like, oh wow, it's been almost a decade. Uh, so it, it really, it, it, it's kind of both, you know what I mean? It feels like yesterday, but at the same time, it's been forever. You're like blink and you miss it, but blink and you really it, miss it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, here. exactly. Life's been changed a little bit for you since your time here. 2014 was your first last year playing, excuse me. 
and now coaching out in Vancouver Island, which is a microclimate, I think you were saying. Exactly, okay. yeah. Explain a little bit what life, what life has been like out in Vancouver Island. Yeah, you know, it, it's really amazing. I consider myself for, so fortunate to be out there and uh, to continue kind of giving back to the community that gave me so much, right? It's just uh, football, the coaches, uh, everyone that volunteered their time uh, put so much into me and put so much belief into me. So now to be able to kind of give back to the community and those 18-year-old kids, uh, it's really it's really been awesome. So I feel very fortunate. And you were saying before we went on the air, and I really want to make sure you be able to touch on it. The year that you won MVP in the CIS and MVP of the Eights Cup Championship, you said there were so many guys on that team that could have also been equally as worthy. Looking back, if there's anything that you could say to those guys and the impact that they had on something that you'll never forget as a player now, as yeah. a coach, and being able to instill into those 18-year-old players that you're coaching now, yeah. is there anything that you could say to them now, having that time to reflect and time to kind of reminisce, reminisce that you could right now if yeah. you have a chance? Yeah, no, for sure. I, it, 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 I feel so surreal to be, you know, to be the person that has their name kind of at the forefront but but you know like i was saying it really could have been uh, any one of those guys on the team uh, that did it and and you know they were the only reason i was able to to you know be my best because i i played with them and uh, i consider myself to be fortunate uh, and to have learned so much for them so i i will be you know forever grateful and eternally grateful and uh, i just love those guys so much and likewise we as a griffin community will always be forever grateful for john rush and what you did for this football community and what this program still feels the effects from of all your success and all your hard work thank you yeah. one more time we no thank you everything yeah i appreciate it pete and sean back up to you with the call for the rest of the first quarter Sacramento, Sean Josh Campbell making it second and long. And uh, the last second and long, the uh, thank you, John Rush and Scotty Frazier. But, uh, uh, oh, timeout, Keegan Hall. This gives nice. us a chance to talk about, you know, they had him in second and long and the legs of Keegan Hall. For sure, Anthony Mortuzo with a big tackle on the sideline. And Pete, but that sack is what is what Guelph needs. And listen, let's talk about John Rush, who was oh, just interviewed. My goodness. Legendary. I was there at the Yates Cup. I think that was 2015. It was. At Western, 23-17. Um, we even talked about that pregame with uh, some of the Guelph uh, people around here. And Stu Lang. Uh, Stu yeah, Lang. Were reminiscing and that was a magical day. And that John Rush, he was oh, the original boy. junkyard dog he here really in was. Guelph. And he was all Canadian that year, and uh, he was just outstanding. Yeah, that was, uh, that was some kind of football team. And uh, Coach Lang, you know, he... Uh, he had that team well prepared. Watch this. Finally, folks. Pete. Here we you go, get. Josh Campbell. Sacamino! Look at that. Brought down big number 96. Tipping the scales at over 300 pounds. You don't get away when he gets a hold of you. He'd be one. Look at this. Look at that nice little Mike Weir left-handed golf swing. <laughs> Beautiful. Whoa. I love it. Mac takes a timeout to regroup here, Pete. 127 left in this first quarter, an action-packed quarter. 7-3, the Marauders have the lead and the ball in a key second and long, second and 12. Lots of receivers, two to the right, two to the left. One background, got some time looking down the middle of the field, throwing high, and the ball is caught. And a huge first down there, number two, Jackson Cooling. Jackson Cooling, another one of his favorite receivers thus far. Him and Adar, the two main uh, culprits here in, 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 Maco, in the Mac offense. Again, great patience by Keegan Hall. He yeah. threw it on top of the, over top of the linebackers, and that is just a beautiful strike. Yeah, so far the keys to this game and the success are second and longs and McMaster converting. You want to put a team in that spot, but you got to hold them, and uh, it's been a challenge so far for the Griffins. All right, back to pass again. Hall's got all kinds of time. Going to get to the outside, throw it into the corner. Got a man wide open. He might have been out of bounds. He was, Sean. Pete, he Whoa. had a foot on the dreaded white yeah. when he caught that ball. And, again, a little bit of a breakdown in the secondary because yeah. he was all alone. And you can see the replay here. Oh, that's oh, a play that's, before. Yeah, that's a play before. Real nice pitch and catch to Jackson Cooling. Johnny Green there on the push out. I didn't see who that was. It might have been Everett Reed that stepped out of bounds for them. So here we go. Another second and long, Sean. Ball at the 36-yard line of the Griffins. We have not seen a blitz yet. Is this you know, the time? Pete, 
Hall is really picked on this left side. And again, I where is uh, Adair lining up? I think right here on yeah. the left. So look out. Number 86, folks. Fake hand off, rolling right, being chased down, throws across, back. Oh, and Mortuzo made the tackle, but I think it's enough for a first down. The first Griffin hit him, but didn't wrap him up. That would have been short of the first down, and it is another key first down for their mean marauder son second and long again and pete they rolled keegan hall out to the right that time to avoid that pass rush uh, just a beautifully designed play yeah, watch this this is Devonte hudson making the catch and uh i didn't see it was 37 that's anakin guthrie. Uh, guthrie who just couldn't hold on to him we talked to Anakin Skywalker Guthrie, and he says he's got a, maybe an interception in him today. He feels there's going yeah. to be an interception today. He's also going to be returning punts. Yes, we'll keep uh, an eye out for that. Um, first down, ball now on the 25-yard line. The Marauders with 10.8 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Have the lead, have the ball. It's 7-3, and they are knocking on the door. Okay, here's a good shot of this out-of-bounds play here. Watch this, folks. Ball is caught. He comes come right, right down, down out of foot bounds. on the white. Yeah. Great call. Both no. officials, by the way, Pete. David Bazo, that was number 85. That's a real skill, awareness of where you are, especially when you're close to the sideline. We saw that on a Monday night football. It would have been a uh, maybe a winning mm, touchdown, touchdown, and it uh, didn't turn out that way. Yes, that was quite the play. Baltimore, Instant replay. City. Yeah. All right, first down and 10. Ball at the 25-yard line. Two receivers out to the right, one in the slot, one out here to the left, and a one setback for these Marauders. The turn, the ball is handed off and brought down almost immediately. What a play. I believe that might have been. Let's see that Pete, number. I, that 91, Sean, I think it is the, Robert Keyes Wilson. Keyes Wilson, what a great Whoa. play, Pete. Wrapped him up. What a beauty. Well done, and that's the end of the first quarter. And again, here we go, Sean. I'm going to say it for the sixth time. Second and long. It's second down and ten. We're going to switch ends of the field. Uh, your impressions so far, Mr. Moynihan? Just an action-packed first quarter, Pete, and I'm still a little bit hurting over that procedure penalty that took a touchdown off the board for Guelph. But... Churning and finally brought down. And there's a nice catch by Thomas. And look at that run. Donovan Malloy punishing defensive back. And here's Hall. And this, look, there's the sack. Big sack there. And then here's a nice catch. And that was a key first down. And that's where we stand. Um, and we'll have what, to see if that becomes a trend here, Pete. If they yeah. do roll Hall out a bit more as Guelph gets a little more pressure. There's a big. Uh, Number 96, Josh Campbell, who's already had a sack and showed us that beautiful golf swing. You got number 58, um, or 56 out there, I should say. Max Holmes. They and have first and 10 on the scoreboard, people. I think yeah. it's second oh, and it's 10. second and 10. You look at the, uh, the uh, marker over there, so second and 10. This is another key play. Three receivers out to the left, two here to the right, one setback. Maybe be able to get some uh, pressure from the defensive line. Stepping up in the pocket. Going to take off and run. And down he goes. And that's defense. That's victory, Hold, Pete. Absolutely. Hold him to a field goal attempt. Pete, and that was 33. Maddox Martin. Here comes who Michael really Horvath. forced it. And yep. Count this as a victory for Guelph. Without question. Here's our replay here, Pete. Watch Maddox come across the middle here. Yep. And Keegan Hall says, we will play for another day yeah you got uh, Matt, uh, Mr. Max Holmes coming at you you do go down <laughs> all right this is going to be about a 20 uh, let's say a 28 yard attempt really a chip shot for Mr. Horvat balls down kick is up a low liner and it is good is good
14.20 to go. It's 10-3. But as you mentioned, uh, uh, a victory there, a small victory for this uh, Griffin defense. They haven't been able to stop them on second and long, and they did. Pete, there's some big games in the OUA today. Boy, down the road, Western at Laurier. That is a marquee oh matchup of two That's heavyweights. That's drink water is, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Carlton at Toronto, Queens at Ottawa, and Windsor down in York. Well, there's a new marshal in town. A little bit of a change in starting quarterback, and we got a penalty flag. Too many men on the field, I believe, or a delay on Guelph. That hurts. There was a guy running off. Yeah. Oh, boy. That hurts. This is nuts, Pete. This is selected wounds. Yeah. I mean, you're coming off a field goal, and, uh, yeah, it's difficult. So it's going to be first and 15 now, ball at the 30-yard line. One receiver out to the right, four here to the left-hand side. And it looks like uh, Isaiah Smith might be the running back. His first action. Here's a little pitch. Flip and brought down. And maybe getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Yep, he got four back. Tessier. Pete. Boy, that penalty, though, just puts ah, you behind the oh, eight ball does. before you start. Second will drive a coach crazy. McCray remains in there. That quarterback. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. Four receivers out to the right. One out here to the left. That's Thomas Rodusgars. Isaiah Smith caught a couple balls out of the backfield last week, Pete. Let's see if they find him or maybe just give it. And there's McCray faking the handoff, and he's still running, and he gets the ball all the way up to the, about the 40. Uh, Going to be about three yards short. Yeah, Boy. Two or three short, Pete. It looked like he had nothing. And, uh, yeah, it looks like the punting unit. I was wondering if Dan Campbell was showing up on the field and would go for it on fourth down. But, uh, no, they're going to punt it away. Hey, Pete, we have a packed house here today. Kids are yep. back in school. Boy, the deck is filled with people. Friends of Guelph football. We'll talk about them a little later here. The Alumni Association in the end zone. Nick Cardero to punt, and he hammers it dandy. End over end, fielded back around his own 24-yard line, trying to make his way upfield, and does gain a few yards. And uh, the Marauders will have decent starting field position at their own 35. Let's see if this Griffin defense, Sean, can make it two in a row. Nice return there, Pete, for about nine yards. Looked like he was going to be trapped. Sprung loose for nine. Yeah, as I mentioned, decent field position. There's a good shot of Keegan Hall, along with Jackson Cooling, number two. First down and 10. Ball at the 30, I will say the nose of it at the 36-yard line. Three receivers out here to the right for the Marauders. One to the left, one lone setback. Hall fakes the handoff. There was nobody there to fake to and set! Oh. Big play, Pete. Oh. Something a little wrong with that play from yeah. the get-go. Hall turned around as if to fake a handoff. There was no one there. And great pressure. Was that? Eunice, oh, Larry. Eunice Larry. And Pete, oh, I yeah. believe Eunice Larry has three sacks wow. already this year. There's his fourth. And what a monster play. Oh, man, that kid, I'm telling you, he's the Micah Parsons of the OUA. You can put him anywhere. You might throw him back at safety. Who knows? So athletic. What a play. Second and about 20. Maybe more. Back to pass, looking. Here comes some pressure. The old screen pass. Moving up with some blockers. And getting a good chunk of it back. Going to be about five, maybe six yards short. But... Uh, the old, uh, ooh, and we got an injured Griffin down. Pete, that's Miles Luff, okay. Who's hurt? Oh, and it looks three. like an yeah. ankle. Yeah, he's in a bit of uh, agony there. Boy, he's, uh, he's a heck of a football player. Well, Pete, this team lost Devin Cromwell. Number oh, 22, man. fantastic defensive back. I believe he was an All-Canadian. And um, he went to uh, Texas Tech on a scholarship. However... They had to sort of revamp the secondary, 
And thus far this year, they've been fantastic. Miles Lafocade, yeah. Gianni Green, um, uh, Simon Guerin. They've really had a, you know, Martuzzo's in there. They've really had a, uh, a, a great showing. They cannot afford to lose Miles Lafocade. It looks like Caleb Sargent maybe over there. Uh, is that? No, 37. Yeah, Anakin Guthrie. We're going to be back to return uh, punt. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, Along we thought. With Jacob we, Tessier. Tessier and uh, Guthrie. Let's see if the Skywalker can make it happen. Punting situation. Mike Horvat. Going to let it fly. And he does. Guthrie comes up, picks it up on his own 30, heads straight north, and gets up over the 40, and looks like going to be good field position. 41-yard line. Pete, a win for Guelph yeah. on the flip in the field. Boy, Eunice Larry out there on special Does teams, it all. too. Oh, boy. Here comes Tristan Abood after we saw you know, Pete, Marshall uh, yeah, have a series. You have to realize for a player and a player thinking of playing at the next level, say in the CFL, special teams is significant, yeah. um, especially for young Canadian players. Uh, you have to demonstrate you can play special teams, and Eunice Larry doing it all today. All Tristan right. Abood back in, Pete. Four receivers here to the left. Now two going motion to the right. And here's a little flip cross pass and trying to cut up field and managing to maybe just get a yard out of it there is Tessier. They've tried that play a couple of times. A little misdirection, but uh, with no luck. Watch this, folks. little flip pass, but a real fine play by, uh, I believe, number six, uh, Pete. Drake Bodie, number yeah. 23, really yeah. disrupted that play. He's lucky really to get back to the line of scrimmage. Passing down likely for Guelph. Yeah, second and long. Three receivers to the left. Two out there to the right. Nobody in the backfield. Back. Lots of pressure. A boot steps up. He tries to get out to the right, and he's going to take off, and he's got a first down. It all depends on where the mark is. It's and it's going to be a first, first down. down. I'm going to call By it. By a hair, here. Pete. Yes. A boot showing his escapability. He was caught a couple times in What's there, that? Pete. Look at him go. And super awareness knowing where yeah. the where that first down marker is. He was uh, staring down the barrel of number 44, Greg Thomas. And we got a player down out there. It's William Arsenal, I believe, Pete. Yeah, it might be just a cramp maybe. It is a little bit We warm. were yeah. surprised at how warm it was on the field today. Just a perfect day here in the Royal City. Yep. And the Guelph Royals are in the IBL Finals, but the Barry Baycats are handing them all they want more, Mr. Moynihan. I think they're down 3-0, Pete. Yeah. Of course, the, that exciting IBL. Well, the Royals came to Chatham. I had quite a you know, few chats with some of their players. That I said, hey, I called the Guelph Griffin football games, and uh, they're just a super bunch of guys, and, uh, they took uh, our uh, Chatham Kent Barnstormers out in three straight, but uh, a great season for the Barnstormers. For Mr. sure, Moynihan. Pete. That's an exciting league. Yeah, uh, it really Guelph is. Guelph and Chatham and London, Brantford and London and Hamilton. Welland and Hamilton, Kitchener. Yeah. It's just a very cool baseball league. All right, making his way off under his number five, Willem Arsenal. Got to have him in the lineup. It's a big first down. Abood keeps the train rolling. Coming out here, Jackson Zerby wide to the left. We got three receivers on the right, one set back, two to the left. Tristan Abood, uh, the advantage of being a tall quarterback. He can see over the line and survey the field that much better. A little bit of motion out here to the left. Back to pass, looking, 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 throwing it long and deep. Got a man hanging on him, and we're going to have a pass interference call. As number 84 was Thomas Rodud scores. I gotta pronounce that name a little better, Sean. Yeah, Pete and Isaiah Shields just didn't get his yep. uh, head turned around, and uh, this was a a brave pass yes, over the was. middle. Look at that, oh. Road Huskers. Yeah, but definitely a penalty. That'll be an automatic first down. March at 15 more yards. The Griffins will take it. They trail by a touchdown with 9 and 52 to go here in the second quarter. McMaster Marauders 
Guelph Griffins Highway 6 Series. Coming to you live on OUA TV and Rogers 20. Peter Cobb along with Sean Patrick Moynihan. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, one setback. Aboud again turns, fakes the handoff, steps up, and he's throwing in long and deep. Got a man out there, and it is overthrown. Just out of bounds. Looks like he was looking maybe for uh, Monroe Cornliffe. Number 16 out there? Yeah, it was Monroe. We have not called, called his, his name, name very no. much. He got open there, but it, the ball was just a little bit overthrown. Look at that arm, Sean. Pete, and I thought maybe He's we might yeah. see a little bit more of Donovan Malloy. He yeah. was... Johan Shimbalanga, number four, was on the uh, coverage there for the Marauders. All right, Sean, second and long for these Griffins. Ball at the 44-yard line of the Marauders. Second and 10. Back to pass. Blitz coming. Look out. Sack. Ball's out. And it's recovered by the Griffins. Uh, Boo did not see that coming. Pete, I think that was number 98. Dominic Limonani. Yeah. Lamont, Dominic Lamani. Yeah. 300 pounds, 6'4". Wow. Second and year. Boy, Justice. Political philosophy and law. That's Beautiful. his majors. Is that it? <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, third down. And are we attempting a field goal? Sean, this is 52 yards. 52 with the wind at the back. Not much of a win, though, yeah. Pete. Yeah. This would be monumental. I would imagine a uh, career long. And that kicker, I think it's Benjamin Lane, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Lane. Yeah, Benjamin Lane from 52. The ball is down. Kick is up. John, it's long enough. And it is good. good. Are you kidding me? 52 right down the pipe. My goodness. That would and, have been good from 62. And, Pete, the, uh, the official just a little bit delayed in putting up his hands there for the signal. Wow, look it at that. It held folks. everybody. Look at it. That cleared it. Come on, gentlemen. There oh, we are. Oh, man. What a beauty. All of a sudden. How big is that, Pete? That is massive. I, I thought, okay, hold it now. That is wonderful. Eric Strunz. Benjamin Lane. Co kicking coach yeah. over there. Very happy. Boy, kicking, you know, you had the Ferreros and then Eric and now Ben Lane knocking them from way out. First down, Marauders. Their own 35, back to pass, and oh, they had him for a moment, get it ball out in the flat. Going to be a first down and more, and oh, Sean, they had Hall They had in him the in their hands, yeah. Pete. What a play by Hall, though. He drew that DB in and then f flipped. Yeah. First well, down. Well, and the only good news there, Pete, is Miles Lafocade, number three, is back in the game. He made the tackle here. And here's our replay, Pete. It looked like right there. What a nice play, though. You have to get that uh, Keegan Hall. He has been fantastic for Mac. I'll tell you, Phil Jones has corrected me. He's saying 53 yards out. <laughs> Phil Jones played in the CFL. Lovely bride, Kathy Black Jones. They're good friends of ours. They live in the Guelph area. Their nephews involved with the video team. Here at today's game, and what do we got? Another cramp over there, maybe, Sean? Or I, I think so, Pete and Pete. Why, we've got a moment. Last week in the U Sports Top 10, all types of action. First of all, Laval and Montreal, a battle of the heavyweights out in Quebec. 23-22, Laval over Montreal. It's got to be one of the craziest rivalries yeah, really in is. Canadian sport. Like and Calgary, Ryan Sheen, after a first-week loss, marches into Alberta and upsets the highly-ranked Alberta team, 36-22. Um, so that really impacted on the, on the top 10. And we'll get to the top 10 in a few minutes when we get another break. As... Uh, Matt gets ready to go here on a first and 10. From their own 49-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, one setback. Hall surveying the situation. Looks, he's back to pass, got some time, throws it out here in the flat, got a man wide open. And that is Adair who's stretching the ball, 
trying to get a first down, and he, Pete, sorry, that's Devontae a Hudson, Pete, he, he'll find play. Sorry. And I'll tell you, that ball is throwing a mile. Yeah, look at that. The far hash marks on a bullet. Watch how he stretches out here, Sean, trying to get that first down. And he was successful. Yes, he was. Ball now into Griffin territory at their own 49-yard line. Shotgun formation. Four receivers to the left. All in motion. One out here to the right. Looking, trying to get a man, and Sacamino! Another big play by number 91, Robert Keyes Wilson. Keyes Wilson just did not give up there, Peter. Again, give the secondary full marks for Guelph. Look at he gets a grip yeah. of that jersey. Well, you know, when you put five receivers out, you are asking your offensive line to do double duty, and uh, Keyes Wilson said, hold it. One-on-one, -on -one, you can't stop me, and they didn't. It's second and 12, another second and long situation. Three out here to the right, a re receiver in the right slot, one to the left, one setback. Lots of motion turning. Back, blitz coming from the weak side, got a man wide open. It is caught out there, and that is a first down. But Pete, I'll tell you, Keegan Hall got rocked. Yeah, he took a shot, didn't he? And I'm trying to get a number. I think it was 33. Maddox Martin, the linebacker, yeah, come came in him. and gave him a shot just as he released the ball. But you've got to be impressed with this uh, Keegan Hall. Oh, Let's yeah, see if we watch. get it here. Oh, well, that's the sack yeah. a couple plays before. Yep, nice play there, Keys Wilson. All right, first down. Marauders are starting to roll here. They got the ball at the 33-yard line. Back to pass again. Coming down the middle, and that ball oh. is tipped and almost intercepted. And you talk about taking a shot. And Second he's slow time. to get up. Pete, let's see who made that. Oh, my I think goodness. it was number 69. Nine, it was. Nicholas Bartachinko almost sent him into the next planet. Oh, he, you can see he felt that. We might get a replay of that. I'm going to tell you, Parchenko says, how do you, you can see, he is still having trouble. Yeah, he's he's not doing he's well winded, out there. He's winded, Pete, and Watch here's this, our folks. great team getting a replay. This is how you play deep. Boom. You want to play quarterback in the OUA, have a big 300-pound defensive lineman rock you and stay in there and throw the ball. I'm going to tell you something. Keegan All has the courage of a lion. And you can see he's still down on one D. He took quite a shot, Sean. Well, in, in fairness, Pete, Parchenko really put that body weight into him as he drove him to the ground. Yeah. Wonder. Other other days, that's been called a penalty. With, yeah. When you, but he moved his head to the side, sure. I noticed. And, uh, uh, we're going to call it perfectly legal for the sake of Guelph football. Pete, I want to talk about the top ten while we have a break here sliding into the top 10 at number one, no surprise, Western. Number two, Montreal. Number three, Laval. Number four, Laurier. Number five, Windsor. Six is Manitoba. Seven is Bishops. Eight is Queens. It's a little surprised at that. Number nine is Alberta. And Regina is number 10. And uh, we're going to see lots of action today, maybe changes in that because there's some big games. And as we mentioned earlier, just down the road, uh, Western travels to Laurier. A lot of people have that game marked on their calendar. What's that going to look like? Can Laurier compete with that big Western team? Yeah. I'm going to clap because uh, there's a great shot. He is a big kid, and he stood right in there and took that shot. You can see him going over and uh, saying, hey, coach, I'm good. I can get back in this game. You don't need to take me out, but he has to come out for one play at least. And we are going to watch Lucas Baresi. He Lucas. wears number three, I believe, Sean, at quarterback. It's second and long. All right, Lucas. He's a big kid too, yeah. Pete. Now, he's often their uh, third down um, sort of back, quarterback, right. comes in on short and third, so we'll see. Nobody in the backfield. He might roll out here and run. There's a hold, and they're going to throw it long and deep, and that ball is caught! 
What a, oh, and he threw the ball at the, oh, and that hit the umpire. It was accidental, it was excited. Um, I'm looking for a flag, and there was. I, there's a hold back here, Oh, back here, there was a oh, hold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that poor uh, side judge yeah. there. I was looking for the hold, Pete, so I missed the uh, exchange with the official. I'm sure it was accidental. Yeah, it was. Watch this. Rolling right. See the hold there. He just let him go at the last minute. But here's the catch. And yeah, that's a dandy catch in the excitement. Oh. Yeah, and you can hear Woo. the collective ooh of the crowd. Of the crowd. There is no there is no comment needed. And well, Pete, I'm gonna ask you when, be when professional. You were in the choir, <laughs> when you were in the choir. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever watched that show, The Sopranos? Oh, that's there outstanding. You go. Yeah. All right, well, that's a uh, big play now. It's going to be second and 20. And uh, Berrios, uh, or Beresi, I should say, the task, uh, the, what is this? Uh, They've got the Beresi. medical staff just talking yeah. here with the official for yeah. a few moments. Let's see, he says, I'm all right. See the crowd getting into it. Boy, this booth shakes when they start stomping their feet, Mr. Moynihan. Got a great crowd here today, oh, Pete. You see do. a lot of jerseys. I mean, I see the Bertuzzi family down yeah. here. They have a slew of fans, a family here today to cheer on Guelph. Boy, Pete, we've had an excellent first half of football. 4.55 left. 10-6. Second and 20, a chance for Guelph to get the ball back. Let's see if uh, Mr. Baresi, the first year of eligibility in humanity, 6'4", Sean, 200 pounds. All these quarterbacks, other than Marsh McCary, well over six feet tall. All right, lots of motion, back to pass. Baresi's got time looking, and he's trying to escape. And sack Camino! Another Guelph Griffin sack. And Pete. Let's get a number. I know 98, I believe. Is that Mortuzo in there, too? I think it might have was number two. Yeah, 98 led the way. Yeah. Curtis Wood, Manzi, and Mortuzo. Yeah. Watch this. Rolling, looking, looking. And look at Mortuzo get there, yes. You want to believe, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the torpedo has landed. He did. And they're going to punt the ball here. Horvat back, punts it. It's a good, solid punt. Guthrie going to let it bounce, get into the end zone. He's going to bring it out and try to get to the sideline and gets hauled out of bounds about the 10-yard line. He brought it out, Pete, made a real smart play, yeah. taking that ball in the end zone because that ball comes out to the 20 now. Right on. And uh, 4-10 to go, Sean, 10-6. Griffins have the lead and an absolute spectacular. Thank you for ordering this weather, Mr. Moynihan. You bet. We have another, what looks like another. All right, Sanders, and you'll wait to get started. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right, let's see that question. Okay, here we go. Teams oh, in yeah. this country. Um, a lot of seniors on that team. I think they have their entire offensive team back except one. And uh, Taylor Elgersma, oh, he was the MVP of the OUA last year. Just a, just a fine quarterback. Um, you know, Guelph had a big fake punt in that game. And, God, I was so impressed with Caleb Sargent. Uh, Curtis Wood, Wood Manzi was outstanding. Oh, yeah. Um, Geez, I think Guelph had 35 first downs in that game. Um, 196 yards on the game. I know it was a loss, but what a what a great effort against a fine team. And here we go, Pete. All right. Well, Tristan Abood back in at quarterback. And in behind him, it looks like Isaiah Smith. Sure. Number and 26. I'm waiting. I got a feeling this kid's going to bust one. He, you know, they're taking it easy with him because sure. he had such major Had a whole year, year off. But, yeah. Pete, um, we have not seen much of a running game thus far from Guelph. So let's see what happens. But They can't off, throwing that ball out in the flat, wide open, caught, and first down. Beautiful play. 
Pete. Looks yeah. like number 88, Sean. And that's, that's Jared, Jared that's Tessier. Tessier. Yeah. Nice catch. And first down. Use the clock efficiently. And uh, Coach uh, Potasic, he talked about ball control. And uh, so far, the Marauders have done the job avoiding that. 3.34 to go, 10-6. Here we go. First down. Ball on the uh, Griffin. 35-yard line. Lots of motion out here. Turning. Handing the ball off to Tessier. He tries to cut it upfield, and he's going to be brought down. That Pete, play they second have tried. time, yeah. and it's not been successful. No, it hasn't. Just too many people on that line. Braxton Peters with a nice defensive play for the Marauders here. You can see Tessier trying to turn it upfield, and Peters filled the gap. Helmet came off and uh, made a nice play. Now it's second and long. Second and nine. Here we go. Back to pass. Abood throws it across the middle. It is caught. Making one man miss, two men miss, and another. Griffin first down up across their own 51, maybe now to the 53-yard line. Boy, Arsenal, William Arsenal. Wild Bill Arsenal with a yeah. nice catch and made it just sort of a button hook there, Pete, and yeah. Abood finds him. Looks like he's looking for him all the way. Watch him make a couple of people miss here. Got him going the other way, and that fella miss. They get an extra two yards, get down, cover up the ball. Big first down in that second long. Number five, Willem Arsenal. Did not play last week, Pete, but uh, having been, a good half He's here. having a real good half. We got slam dunk at halftime, and you'll see our first half highlights. We have such a top-notch crew here, Griff Vision. Here we go, first and ten. Fake handoff, back to pass. A boot stepped up in the pocket. He's got some running room, and he's going to go and run. And look at him get another first down and more. All the Beautiful way to the 41-yard line. And Isaiah Smith out on the side with a couple of blocks, Pete. I thought maybe they were going to dump it to Isaiah here quickly. You can just see a boot maturing snap by snap as a quarterback. Pete, we tell league. everyone, we came here Man. last year, and they're going to go with two rookie quarterbacks in the OUA. Impossible. Unheard of. We were so wrong. The two, the two kids have been phenomenal. They're not kids. They're young men. Have been, yeah. McCray and Abood have been spectacular. All right. Smith comes out, and coming in is Don Malloy. Malloy. <laughs> he might be due to bust one. 2.20 to go. Griffin's trail by four. I like the idea of Malloy, Pete. He is such a weapon. Steps to the right, turns, and he's got the ball. He tries to get to the outside. Malloy does, cuts it upfield, and does gain about five yards. Boy, he got to the outside, Sean, and turned it north. Pete, it looked nice like he run. was trapped. Yeah. This kid packs a punch. Donovan Malloy. Look at this, folks. Good block there by Tessier, making life miserable for number 44, Craig Thomas. Greg Thomas, Mac, defensive linebacker. All right, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Malloy remains in the backfield. Second down and five, maybe six. You can really see Mac pack. And fake the hand off. No, they do hand it off, and look out, Malloy is gone. He's heading down to the 20, and he's all the way to the 18-yard line. Oh, they had me fooled. The fake faked everyone out, Pete, including you and I. Wow. Oh, let's get a replay there. My goodness. Because Mac really loaded the box here, Pete. Look at here. Oh, and look at You let this kid get ahead of steam. Gets to the 30, hesitates. Look at Tessier blocking downfield. Pete and that O-line once again. Just yeoman's work out there. And 144 to go. And boy, if you're the girl off Griffins, this is what you want to do, Sean. I'm going to take it down, eat that clock up, possibly take the lead, and go in at halftime feeling good about myself. Absolutely, okay. Pete. And we've talked about this. It's, to me, the most significant change from last year, and it's extended drives. You just can't continually be putting your defense out on the field. And uh, Guelph here, another great drive. We've got uh, number 28, Isaiah Shields, the second-year kid in Commerce, 6'2", 208. Um, defensive back, down on one knee. He's going to make his way off. 
Pete, too, I wish, we should mention why we have a second, too. Uh, friends of uh, Griffin Football, oh, boy. Alumni Association, really dedicated and committed to really enhancing the sport here at the University of Guelph. And we had a pleasure of seeing their honor uh, wall today. Oh, goodness, Just folks. absolutely gorgeous and spectacular at the south end of the stadium. It really is. It's, it's remarkable. A must-see when you come here uh, to Guelph to see a football game. And the next one will be homecoming the end of the month. All right, ooh, a high snap, a boot. Good block, he's throwing it long and deep. Got Arsenal out here. He's got it! it! Touchdown, Griffins! Pete. Oh, my, Willem Arsenal. He kind of got that, he caught that ball with one hand yes, at did. his waist. Pulled it into himself to secure it. And wow. um, Pete, when you see the replay, Donovan Malloy in the backfield yeah. makes a significant block, block to protect his quarterback. And what a play, William Arsenal. Willem, yeah, what a great, yeah. Number five, folks. And uh, with 1.31 to go, the Guelph Griffins have done something they haven't done at all today so far, and that's have the lead. And they got it now, 12-10. And uh, Mr. Lane is going to try to make it a three-point game, and he does. And the Griffins. Go about, oh, I don't know, 68 yards and take the lead. 13-10 with 131 to go. I'm hoping we can get a replay. Here we, here go, we go, Pete. Elf. Now yeah. watch Donovan yeah. Malloy step up here to help out. And this ball. Look at that. Oh, my oh, God. A catch. I guess he did get two hands yeah. on it. Fingertip catch. Wow. Blake, William Arsenal. Blake Williams was on coverage, and he just he did all he could but it wasn't enough to stop number five. And here comes, oh, we got a different, we got the group running the flag. Last time we were here in August, Sean, it was one individual. Remember they had that one dude doing oh. it, then he had to do push-ups, oh, and yeah. then he passed out, and <laughs> it was they, significant. They dunked him with water, yeah. Uh, that, I felt sorry for him. You know, Graces. this school is legendary wow. for their track and field and cross oh, country. My. So I think this makes sense. Get some cross country runners yeah. out here to do this. Good idea. All right, here's the kickoff, and it is a good one. Beauty, Pete. Ben Lane. Get out. All Get the way out. Back and out. And well, I think we call that a rouge, do uh, we you, not? I won't tell you my opinion. You know my opinion about the rouge yeah. in Canadian football, but. When Guelph scores them, I will take them. 14-10, that, that's significant, John. you got to have more than a field goal now for the tie. And let's see, uh, I'm interested to see who comes out at quarterback. Is it's it, uh, it's the big three? man, Pete. Number 16 is uh, back in. He's back. I tell you, folks, you talk about courage. Keegan Hall, you have my salute. Yep. He got nailed twice, oh, Pete. yeah. And I'm bounces you. up and is ready to go. Said, Coach, put me back in. Two receivers out here to the right, one to the left, one set back. And notice they've got a few more offensive linemen to protect that quarterback. Throw it out high, and that ball is intercepted. And, oh, what a play, John. Wow. By number 89, or Kyle simon Garen. Yeah, they're going to get a penalty for excessive celebration. But number 13, Simon. Kyle simon Garrett, he scores if uh, number 89, James Priestner, does not make this tackle. Watch this. There he gets whacked again. simon Garrett with the interception. Watch this defensive play right there. He has a, uh, a host of blockers in front of him. Yeah, and Groff got yeah. penalized. And, yeah, and a little bit of celebration. I, I think they ran into the official during the celebration. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, sort of a taunt. God, that's tough to take yeah. a celebration, Pete. Yeah. But that's, that's tough to take, everybody. Yeah, you can hear the yeah. collective booze. What did they crowd. used to call it in the NFL? The no fun league was yeah. what they used to call <laughs> yeah. it. And uh, they've lightened up there. But what a play. Well, there's just, a new marshal in town, Sean. Just four receivers to the right, two to the left. Who's blocking? Marshall McCray is the quarterback. Look at the blitz coming from all over. And we got an offside on McMaster. 
Let me check the clock. 124, a lifetime left in this quarter. And we have it was confirmation. Interesting. The official on the, our side of the field threw this flag so, so late. Yeah. Far side came out quickly. So it's going to be first and five now. Well, there's, you know what play you like here, Peter. Put well, it in the hands of number one. Let McCray go for a run. If he can get outside, because they were blitzing from both corners. For sure, they Pete. They showed it. And they've really loaded up. They've really loaded up the box, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Look at it. One, two, three, four, five, kind of four linebackers for sure. And uh, number four, our defensive back moving up. All right. Back to pass. McCray going to throw it right across the middle. Got a man open. Good block. And down to the 20. And Arsenal gets knocked out of bounds about the 15-yard line. Willem Arsenal, Sean. <laughs> William Arsenal is on fire, Pete, and I'll tell you, I believe the block was made. I'd like to get the number here. I, I thought maybe the block was made by uh, number 26, Seven. Isaiah no, Smith. 27. 27. I was close. Yeah, Caleb, Caleb Sargent. Sergeant at arms. Wow, the running back's making a real, real contribution off the ball here. We've seen it from Malloy now. We've seen it from Sargent, and it looks like. Maybe Either a time injury. Out on yeah, might be number 41, Josh Masnagi. I think Masnagi. M A S N A G H I. Looks like he's down on one knee. He's going to get up. And, and I'll tell you, Pete, for Guelph to punch one in here will be significant. Oh, wow. After a bit of a slow start, have really started rolling, extended drives, a couple big sacks on defense. Well, that pass, the marshal is yeah. still in town. He's still yeah, behind he center. Number five. You have Donovan Malloy. I believe <laughs> that's Malloy. Boy. One fourteen to go before halftime. Here's the pass. Fake the handoff. Marshall's going to just take it and run. Look at him go up the middle, and he goes inside the 10, Sean. Marshall McCray is a threat. Oh, my. Tough to bring down. Almost impossible to bring down one on one, but we do have a big second down here, Pete. Well, second and three, I, I can live with that with uh, with number one there and in, uh, in the lineup. And let's see uh, what happens here. I, you know, yeah. you wonder if it's three down territory. For sure, it depends on, of course, on, on this, this play. play here, Pete. We're under a minute to go. McCray's looking wide right. Got lots of motion here. Here's the pass back, and he's looking, and he's going to head up field, and he's going to be shy. What a fine defensive play there. Number four, Pete. Yeah, Johan Shimbalanga. Fourth-year kid. That just took too slow. I think he yeah. wanted to pass the ball or do a shovel pass. Third and two. All right, Mr. Moynihan, I'm going to put your uh, head coaching hat on. What's your call? Well, I like Donovan Malloy. Well, I don't, I don't see him I don't in see the a game. Kicker coming out. <laughs> uh, I like Donovan Malloy. I would have liked Donovan Malloy on the last play. Um, most importantly, um, yards after contact by Malloy is just so significant. Yeah. He runs over people. And we'll see what they try here. Well, uh, they do have Malloy in the backfield. Yes, they do. Coach Surya, the riverboat gambler. Key point of this game, about a 41 seconds to go before halftime. It's third and two, and a long two. Pete, and you have Laurent Paquin on the timeout. Griffin's not a bad play. Let's take a look at things. McCray didn't like what he saw. And uh, I'm just checking the timeouts left now. Doesn't down to one, I think. I'm sure they've used one already. All right. To keep the offense out there. Pete, we mentioned the friends of Grove football and uh what a just what a great group of alumni and interested fans. Well, Bill, Bill Brown, Brown is a superstar. Absolutely organizing that. You know, over two hundred thousand dollars and 
in uh, scholarships they, they create, and plus they run that tailgate at the north end of the end zone, which is phenomenal. And while we're talking about tailgates, thank you to the pop party, parents oh, of players, my. for another spectacular pop party, the burgers from Harvey's. The well, it was Montana Rips. How many times did you go back? I tell you. Well, why not? The price was right. <laughs> All right, Here big we play, go. folks. Look out, third and two. Lots of motion. Turn, hand the ball off the middle, and it's a touchdown! Donovan Malloy, number 23. Oh, my. You know how much I like Donovan Malloy. Uh, I hope we get the replay here after. Watch, Sean. They had all three in the game, Sergeant oh. Malloy and Smith, and they all form a triangle and point at each other. Watch this, folks. If we can if we can get that portion of the replay, that was something super. That's the Bermuda Triangle it right really there. It really is. I love that. Those three, my goodness, Sergeant Malloy and Smith. And an extra point away from making it a 21-10. to 10, And just like that, bang, bang, the Griffins. Two touchdown kick is up. It's good. And with 17.4 seconds to go, a right-hand overhook punch by these Griffins. Watch this. Here's the replay again. Look at Malloy. Make one man miss, two man miss, makes a scoot, and then it's a touchdown. And he gets up and watch him come over, and he says, okay, hold it, hold it. Where, there they are. There's the triangle. Now Zerby realizes, oh, no, I'm not a running back. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting some good screen time. Hello, Mom. Well done, crew. And uh, I want to give again, uh, Sean, uh, a shout-out to, uh, to our uh, crew here. Boy, are we lucky. Ember Campbell, Kimberly Clark, Will Shuya, Caitlin Boyd, she's our graphic, Caitlin's our graphics person. Hugh Reichfeld is on the replay. Well done, Hugh, thank you. How about our director, Neil White? And then, of course, our producer, Matteo Cugliari. And uh, just so good for us, so professional, and make our job so much easier from up here. For sure, Pete, a nice crew behind us working on this beautiful day. It's a short kick, a I like it. Kick. Yep, pick it up. And going to try to get him before, and there you go. The ball going to be up, spotted about the 38-yard line. I'm looking. There's 13 seconds to go. And here come the Marauders. And you wonder what uh, their thoughts are. They've got pretty good field position here. 13 seconds. Maybe yeah. try to get it into field goal range. You can see. Look at the Guelph defense. You talk about the big uh, P word, prevent defense. You know, Pete, do, do they throw the ball downfield and – Try to set up with 13 seconds to go for a well, for a field goal. They've got, you can see they're, they're going to take in a knee. Safe formation there. They're going to take a knee. Run that clock. I don't know. I didn't see any time, Sean. Well, that the Come clock the now clock. Yeah. doesn't. The clock will start now, now, Pete, as soon as he winds it. Yeah. And puts the ball down, which has already has happened. So he'll take. He'll let it run out to zero and take the knee because it's not blowing dead until the – in Canadian football, yep. you get to exercise that play. And, and that's halftime. There you, you can go. see the wave of the flag and bang, bang, Sean. In a matter of a minute and a half, two touchdowns by this Griffin offense. A slow start, Pete. But, man, the defense came alive. A couple of big sacks. A couple of big hits on the quarterback. Oh, boy. Caleb Hall. And Tristan Abood, money finding his receivers. Arsenal with a spectacular catch. Yeah, yeah. And Guelph question. really likely played their one of their best quarters of the year. Yeah, without question, especially those last couple of minutes. Well, um, good shot of uh, the Griffins heading to the uh, locker room. Hey, John, it's only one half of football. There's a ton left. Don't you dare go away. And. Uh, uh, our halftime uh, crew of Justin uh, Slam Dunk and uh, Scotty Frazier are going to go and, and review uh, with highlights and their uh, thoughts and inputs. And I think uh, we're going to head down to them momentarily. There's a good shot of uh, the screen, 21-10.
There they are. I can hear me now. Still getting a bunch of screaming back in the background. As long as they can hear us, that's all that matters. Can you, can you guys hear me? I need some. Can they hear me? Nice stadium. Guelph with a huge 21 to 10 lead at the half. Scott Fraser joined the field level by Justin Dunk. Justin, what a huge last third of that second quarter from the Griffins. It really started that real personal catch. It brought Guelph down within scoring territory, and then the defense seemed to follow suit, and then obviously the run game came into play. We'll start with the Arsenal catch and how big of a play Will Martin, player Will Arsenal has been for this Griffins passing game so far through three weeks and a half. That touchdown catch happened right in front of us in the corner of the end zone. He had to turn his body, brought it in with one hand, used the second one to secure it. This kid has been an absolute stud since he stepped on the University of Guelph campus for the Griffins by way of Calgary. He's a native from out there actually went to Dave Dickinson's camps in Calgary, if you can believe it. And I remember talking to Dave Dickinson about him, and he said, look out for this Willem Arsenal kid. He's going to be a playmaker for the Griffins. He was that as a rookie, and number five continuing to do it as a sophomore. That catch really gave the Griffins a lot of momentum, and it's a catch that not a lot of players in the OUA or Canadian University football can make. You can see it right here, corner out, thrown, so he has to completely turn around puts one hand out and makes the tutty. What a play from number five. This guy is a legitimate playmaker on the rise for Guelph. Yeah, and another big catch later on in that second quarter before Donald Malloy punched it in. But let's go to the defensive side of the game and mainly, namely, Kyle Simone Guerin, who had that pickoff. When it looked like Guelph was all but going to be going into the half, down by at least three, maybe more, Kyle Simone Guerin, Picks the ball off and really makes a huge, huge impact on this ball Griffin's defense, but also on the offensive side of well as well with that interception. Well, Guelph was actually up 14-10 at that point, so it extended their lead, right? He got that pick, Guelph came down the field, stuffed it in the end zone, third and two. Donovan Malloy runs it right down the heart of the Marauders defense. But I really like what Matt Barry, the defensive coordinator, is doing for the Griffins. We talked about it off the top. He's been multiple in the looks. He's changed coverage a lot. We've seen guys move around. Eunice Larry has been that chess piece. And also, if you look at Anthony Mortuzo, that's a guy that on any given snap, you don't know where he's going to play. He's played a little bit of middle linebacker. He played safety earlier this season. He can play that strong side linebacker spot as well. So this Griffin's defense, especially after giving up that first touchdown, Keegan Hall, we talked about it. The ball has been in the air almost all day for the Marauders. But what they've done to slow down that McMaster passing attack is covered down better, and they have gotten Keegan Hall off his spot. You've seen he's not comfortable when he tries to run the football. He slipped at one time trying to leave the pocket there. He's a guy that if you make him go to his third, fourth, and fifth reads, he's not comfortable, and he doesn't quite know how to deal with that in terms of getting out of the pocket if that's a last resort. So great defensive scheme by Matt Berry. His unit has been very communicative on the field against this McMaster offense, and it's a big reason why the Griffins lead 21-10. And the big reason why the Griffins lead 21-10 is that call third and two from the seven in the dying minute of that second quarter. You can take a field goal and then go up by a touchdown, be up 17-10 with that field goal, but all of a sudden, 
Mark Serena's offense decides it's going to go with the punch in and Don Malloy, the guy who was able to do it. That's right. And you can see the highlights here. Tristan Abood showing he can be a little bit more comfortable moving in and out of the pocket, but you got to secure the football there, feel the pressure from the backside, and then a 52 yard kick. You noticed it, my man Scotty from Nicholas Gardero. That was an absolute bomb from the kicker. And you can see the defense playing physical, coming downhill against this passing attack. They've really forced McMaster to go wide in terms of how they're going to attack this Griffins defense because they're not letting the Marauders get down the field over the top. And they've been consistently hitting Keegan Hall as he's been letting go of the football, making him pay for all of these attempts that he's trying to get complete. That one was a great catch there, though, along the sideline. But you can see it. McMaster is not running the football so if you're Matt Barry and the Griffins defense you have an idea of what to expect excuse me and then it's Tristan Abood going to work late in the half for this team getting the game turned around off play action he's looked very comfortable I like what he's added here in his game especially in the second year is that ability to recognize when it's covered up down the field and to get on the run when needed and it's Donovan Malloy who's back in the lineup from injury looking spry as ever for this Griffins run game and really that's helped out Abood in the play action passing game allowing him to go to guys like Willem Arsenault in the corner of the end zone making an absolute highlight real catch that one should be on TSN should be on Sportsnet should be on television networks around the country and perhaps even down in the states on ESPN then you have Kyle Simon Guerin Simon Guerin excuse me coming up with the interception for Guelph late in the half Marshall McRae hitting the crossing route to get the Griffins down into territory where Willem Arsenal helps them out there and they're thinking no one else is going to settle for a field goal we want a touchdown right Marshall McRae doing his thing and I like that he stayed in the game here because the threat of him on the field widens the edge and allows some of those gaps in the middle of the field for Donovan Malloy to be able to score that touchdown to make it Griff's up by 11. Yeah, and Malloy and the rest of the Griffins now go into the half with an 11-point lead. We'll take a quick break and be back with more of the Griffins Halftime Show. Well, 21, McMaster 10, it's the Highway 6 Bowl. We'll be back from Alumni Stadium in a moment. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium. Guelph still with that 21-10 lead here at the half as the third quarter looming. But one real big story we wanted to make sure we touched on, Justin Dunk, especially Tavius Robinson, a guy who has gone from Guelph 
to the moon down in Baltimore. <laughs> Tavius Robinson featured on the other network with a huge, huge piece about him and the amount of massive success he's had down south of the border. Tavius Robinson has to be one of the greatest Griffins, as I said, next to one of the other greatest Griffins <laughs> of all time to come out of this program and have so very much success on the field. Tavius Robinson, bar none from my standpoint, is the greatest football player ever to come out of Guelph. And there are some good ones in there. We're talking Heck Crichton winners and Greg and Blake Marshall, and there's a massive list there. But Tavius Robinson's story is very unique, and I wanted to bring it up because TSN just recently did a feature. You can go find it on their YouTube page. And you look what he did in his rookie season in the NFL in 2023. Played in 17 games. Played in every single game for the Ravens. 26 total tackles, 13 solo. Got a sack in there after being selected in the fourth round, 124th overall during the 2023 NFL draft. But COVID for him changed everything in a very positive way. It was a difficult time for a lot of us to get through and be locked down, but that allowed Tavius, who is a confident player, to realize his full potential. When the OUA season was shut down in 2020, he sent his highlight tape out and immediately got attention from scouts in the United States at universities and colleges, ends up going to play at Ole Miss University for Lane Kiffin, the University of Mississippi, where, oh, by the way, Eli Manning used to play. Lots of great players have come through that program. So I really wanted to touch on this because it shows you the type of talent that is currently competing in the OUA and across Canada at the universities that are playing football in this country. There are 27 of them. There's not always going to be a Tavius Robinson level of player, but these are the caliber of athletes now that Canada is putting out from its universities. There has never been more players come from Canadian universities to at least get NFL looks. There has never been more players from Canadian universities getting drafted into the CFL. There has never been more players making an impact at skill positions in the CFL. So I think it's very important that Tavius Robinson's story is out there and is seen by especially those young athletes to realize, hey, wherever I'm from, it doesn't matter if it's northern Canada, southern Ontario, or Guelph, that you can have that career. You just got to go and get it. Yeah, Tavius Robinson, not just a Guelph Griffin, but a Guelph born and bred football player, one of the greatest to come out of this school and this city. John Rush, by the way, another one of them. We caught up with him a little bit earlier. You can check that out on the Griffin's YouTube page following the game. We'll be back with the second half, Guelph 21, McMaster 10. Third quarter after this. Just getting back here, yeah. Pete. A nice uh, return. And boy, Caleb this is Sergeant. A, yeah, Caleb Sargent with the return ball on the 24-yard line of the Griffins. And uh, it looks like in the first one, right here. Oh, that's a boot back there. Okay, there's Tristan back. He's got three receivers to the right, one to the left. The handoff is made big hole coming up the middle and bursting for four, maybe Isaiah five Isaiah Smith and Pete, oh. that's what we remember from exactly. Isaiah Smith. Yards after contact, of course, lost all last season with an injury. He's back this year, had nine carries last week. I believe that's his first carry. Yeah, second and four, and I got to hand it to Anthony uh, Sistanovic, uh, the linebacker. He took a lick, and he's 220 himself. But uh, Isaiah Smith, 
has the body of a Greek god. I'm telling you, well, we got an illegal motion penalty, I believe. They're going to be moved back five. Not what you want on this. It's going to make second and about 11 or 12. Uh, but this is an important series for the McMaster defense. You know, they got bopped twice in the last two minutes with touchdowns by these Griffins. And if the Griffins could ever sustain a long drive and eat up that clock, we'll go over some of those first half stats. Uh, yeah, Pete, it would have been second and five. Yeah. In, a real workable down. Now it's second and 11. Maybe 12. All right, three receivers to the right, two to the left. Abood back to pass. He's looking. He's got the time. Throws it out in the flat. Got a man out there. And not able to break away from that tackle. It's going to be third down. Might have got back to the original line of scrimmage. Josh Cumber with the tackle there. One on one tackle. Very uh, efficient. Actually give him a game of about six. But uh, the uh, mission accomplished for this Marauder defense. Pete, I'm still waiting. Waiting. For um, Isaiah Smith out of the out of the uh, out of the backfield on a pass. He's a couple times he's snuck out now, and we'll have to wait and see. Nicholas Gardero is the punter. And he lets it fly, end over end kick picked up. Going to bring it back to the uh, right and making a couple miss, but a fine tackle there. Looked like number uh, is that 32, Sean. 32 Mason DeBall and made a beautiful. I tackle. was focusing on some extracurricular activity there after the play. I thought we might see a flag, but no, sir. All Good right. field position, though, for, oh, yeah. for this Keegan Hall to start with. 46-yard line. His last series didn't turn out the way he wanted. He threw an interception. And, uh, yeah, we got to say thank you to Montana. It's the game day sponsor. Fantastic uh, to have them here. Yeah. And thank you very much, Montana. They're, they're Involvement here in Guelph football. Great. All right. And here's a handoff and making one player miss and brought down gain of five though. So Curtis Wood Manzi, Pete. Nice play by number big number 98. Six three. You know how, how hot it was out on the field prior to game time oh, yeah. when we were there. These this O line and defensive line must really be feeling the heat. All right, here's another key play, second and five. Let's see what this Griffin defense can do. Three receivers out to the right. Now they go in motion. Head left. Hall, got it. Back to pass, looking. Throws across the middle, got a man open. That's going to be enough for a first down and brought down by Brandon Farigo, but among others. Farigo with a nice play, Pete, and once again, Keegan Hall took a pop mm -hmm. after that play. Yeah, I think uh, Nathan Deckers uh, might have been the person who uh, made the reception. Big fullback. That's enough for a first down, and they are now in Griffin territory at the 51 yard line. Peter Cobb along with Sean Moynihan. Two late second quarter touchdowns have given the Griffins a 21 to 10 lead here as we begin the third quarter. Here's a flip run play. He's got some blockers out in front. Coming from behind, a nice tackle there. Good pursuit by number big number 90. Josh Campbell. Yeah. Hey, Josh is having himself a game yeah. today, Pete. He came a long way to make he that He really play. did. And again, second and five. Sort of a jet sweep there by Mack. They haven't run the ball a ton. Watch how Josh Campbell here, folks. Watch him just continue to pursue. And he uses that swipe to try to poke that ball loose. A la Javon Holland. The Miami defensive back who, Canadian kid who made a heck of a play in that NFL game. All right. Second and five. Back to pass. Got some time looking. Going to have to try to run it now. And he will. Oh, he high steps a player and makes the first down. What a play by... Keegan. I think he jumped over oh, I'll tell you. the torpedo, Anthony yeah. Mortuzo, who had him in his sights. But that Keegan Hall is quite the athlete, as you can see. Showing off his yeah. Ronaldo jumped outside. skills. Look at that. Whoa, what a, what a play. Again, 91. Robert Keyes Wilson. Defensive line, great pursuit by that line. And they put uh, some tremendous hits on Keegan Hall. But Hall's got him moving again, Pete, at first and 10. Yep, back to pass again, looking. 
pretty good pressure and almost caught and no yardage after that gained. It's going to be one of those second down and five again, Sean. Everett Reed with the catch there, Pete. Ball at the 31-yard line. Martuzo, the torpedo making the stop. Look out. As they approach the red zone, they love number 86, Nicholas Adair. He's coming out here to the right. Big, tall receiver. All right, back to pass, looking left, throwing, and that ball is underthrown. And this is going to be interesting, Mr. Moynihan. It's third down and five. The ball at the, and it's not going to be interesting because here Zerks. comes number 21. <laughs> well, Pete, a field goal yeah. makes it a 21-13 game, yeah. potentially a one-score game. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, but I have noticed we have not received any phone calls with coaching jobs. Have, no, that's a we, good, yeah, that's yeah. an interesting point. In fact, we haven't got a lot of calls about <laughs> broadcasting jobs either, but. <laughs> well, you know, on that note, I do want to give a shout out to, uh, our good folks, uh, Jeremy Parkinson and uh, Nick Oakley, who are turning us in. Super fans. Oh, and man. Thank you, up. guys. There's a kick. It's up. It's long enough. And it it's is wide. wide. And trying to run it out and get it out. And they do. And continuing to run and make people miss out to the 20-yard line. Boy, that's a key miss I by Horvath. Pete, and I think that was number 37, Anakin Guthrie, on the play. Good play. We'll try to get a replay and see if that was him. The Skywalker. He made a great play. Of course, we mentioned it earlier. That ball comes out to the 20 if you get it out of the end zone. And Pete, just a great decision here. Goes yeah. wide right. Cuts back. A wall of players, but boy, a whopping 22, 23 yard return. 8.53 to go here in the third. The Griffins have the ball again on their own 23 yard line. First and 10. Back to pass Abood. Looks down the middle, and that ball is knocked down at the line. Boy, he had, uh, who was that? Number 17, Jacob Tessier. Going over the middle, yeah. Pete. And uh, Tessier had some running room in front of him. But a big mitt batted it down, second and ten. And you know, folks, we have such a, tr there's that tip, a great view up here. Yeah. We're on top, highest point in the stadium. In fact, it's hard, it's difficult for us to see numbers sometimes. Yeah. Quite a distance away. All right, second down and ten. Lots of motion, two receivers making it three to the right, two to the left. Back to pass, pressure coming, a boot steps out, gets it out, and whacked. As soon as he caught the ball, is going to be short of the first down by about four yards. And we'll see the punting team one more time. Pete, I believe that was Arsenal with a catch. Yeah, Willem, he's had a big game today. And he gets hit almost immediately. Good yeah, shot Pete, there. And I'm wrong. That's, that's Jacob Tessier. Johan Shimbalanga. Shimbalanga has uh, he's, had, he's some, had big some big hits, hits today. He really has. Shimbabangalanga, I'll tell you. 183. We got a holding call against the offense. They're going to decline it and uh, force Nicholas Gardero to uh, punt it away. You can see that uh, the Marauders are back. It looks like uh, uh, Yusuf Adams back there on the near side here, waiting for the punt. Another punt, and it's going to be caught. And looking to, and no, uh, very good coverage by that Griffins punt Just team. did not let him get outside, yeah. Pete. That that snap was bobbled a bit, yeah. but good. Good patience by Gardero to get it away. You mentioned the wind really hasn't been a factor here at all today, you know. Uh, a little bit out of the south, so, Pete, yeah. but nothing significant. Of course, this is a bowl. And we do sometimes get swirling yeah. winds in here. We've seen crazy things. Yeah. Good shot of Coach Surya. Surya there on the sideline. Giving instructions. First down for the Marauders. Their second possession here in the second half. Got the ball at their own 45-yard line. Back to pass, looking left. Throwing that ball way out here. And missing a tackle. Was number 13, and that's Kyle Simon Guerin, but another fine play by Devontae Hudson. And Pete, Sean. that ball hung up there from, from our vantage point. I thought maybe Guelph was going to close on it, but he does not mind throwing this ball the far yeah. side of the field again. 
And boy, 18, what a couple nice big yards. Hudson grabbed after the catch. Here comes a, a defensive shift here. Is the, now, boy, they, you talk about an open playbook, Sean. It's second down and one. Well, the defense has to line up, really, on the 50, um, well, 50, their own 54-yard line, really. And often they the bring in their backup quarterback, their short yardage quarterback. They did not this time. Here's the turn and the handoff and getting that first down by a, a by yard. By a yard, number 34, Pete. That's uh, Mike DeShane, DeShane again. Yeah, nice little run and that first down. And now the uh, Marauders are into Griffin territory once again here in the third quarter. First down, ball on the 54-yard line, 53-yard line of the Griffins. Let's see what uh, Keegan Hall has up his sleeve. He went out for a couple of plays in the first half. He took quite a shot, but he's uh, hanging right in there. He's back to pass again, looking again to the left. Nice catch, pitch and catch. Gain of a boat, four right down here in front of us. Eunice Larry, number and nine, hanging around there. Eunice Larry's been all over the field today, Pete. Priestner made the uh, catch. Uh, is James Priestner. There used to be a Priestner that played for the Western Mustangs. John Priestner. Yeah. I know when I went to school there many years player. ago, legendary player, and I believe he had an NFL tryout. Yeah. All right, big play, Sean. Second down and six. Lots of motion. Back to pass. All kinds of time. Throwing it hard to the sidelines, but it's out of bounds. Or it is caught. My apologies. What a catch. Oh, I wish we had a camera down that sideline because this was a major league reception. I thought that he, ball was out of bounds. Everybody thought that ball was out of bounds except let's take a look here. Look at here, folks. Oh, we My really goodness. can't yeah, quite it's see. It's so hard to see with the number of players, but regardless, two officials said it was good. Yeah, so quick, and I couldn't even get the number of the uh, receiver there, Pete. Ball on Big the play. 38 yard line of the Griffins. Here come the Marauders trying to claw their way back into this. Now a running play with uh, minimal gain. They hold them up. Maybe we'll give them three on that play. You're going to see second down and seven. Another big second and long play. The Griffins are going to have to see if they can get that pass rush going. They've had uh, some pressure on uh, Mr. Hall this afternoon. And Pete, as they set up for this play, we got a report out of Laurier. Uh oh. At the halftime, 17 to 2. The Wilford Laurier, oh, the Hawks are beating the Western. Wow. That's Western's sick. won 30 games in a row wow. in the OUA. Do not rule them out, though, folks. You know how. All right, back to pass coming through. There's the ball across the middle, wide open, and it is caught. And it's a first down all the way to the 14-yard line, Aiden Namath. And I think that's Nemeth. the first time we've called Namath's name yeah. today. Nemeth and is the pronunciation. it's the same old story, Pete, when Keegan Hall gets time he to stand it. in that yeah. pocket. Legs cut out from under him by number I think 45, Cole Watson. Yeah, into the red zone. Ball now at the 12-yard line of the Griffins. Here come the Marauders. Showing their resilience. Back to pass. The fake handoff. Nobody there. Throw it out in the flat. And hauled down by number two, Anthony, Anthony Mortuzo. And preventing that touchdown, so it looks like it's going to be second down and the ball about the four-yard line, Sean. Need, I believe they need the two for a first down. First down, yeah. Interesting to see the call. You've got to believe this is three-down territory for them, much like we saw with the Griffins. They ran it on third and two, and Malloy got the touchdown. All right. Motion back, turn, handed off up the middle and breaking a tackle and getting down to about the two for a first down. You're going to see first and goal from the two yard line, I believe, for these Marauders. Miles Lafocade in on the tackle, Pete. And Micah Duchesne, who's been, uh, he's been a busy, some, yeah, he's been busy. Running. All right, first and goal, ball on the two yard line. 
Can you imagine they got three shots to knock it in? There's a good shot of this gentleman who's been waving this McMaster Marauder flag all game long. Number 23 is rooting for Drake Bodie. All right. Hand off and no, he stopped. He's short. It's going to be second down the ball on the one yard line now. Let's take a look at the replay, Pete. Lucas Baresi coming into the game. John, here's that uh, short yardage quarterback we saw. A lot of personnel changes. I don't have a 27 on the uh, no. master rotter roster, but I do know I can tell you that Baresi is in a quarterback. He's just going to try to rush it forward, and he does for the touchdown. And the McMaster Marauders have come out swinging, and they will go for one to cut into this lead to make it a four-point difference. Big drive by Mac there, Pete. Especially after the missed field goal yeah. on the first drive. Look at and that look push. Look at that push. Wow. Of course, you got to give a yard at the line of scrimmage, so and almost impossible to Devontae, stop such a play. Devontae Hudson assisting the referees with the <laughs> touchdown symbol. The holder is Jackson Cooling for Mike Horvat, and he nails it. And so. With 1.59 to go here in the third quarter, it's now the Guelph Griffins 21, the McMaster Marauders 17. We'll keep an eye on that game up the road in Laurier, Sean. 17 to 2 is very surprising, but. Could be historical. Yeah. Of course, Laurier, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, number four in the country. Uh, Western, They're number one. one. Yeah, wow. And the head coach of the Laurier Golden Hawks. Michael Falls. I believe he was a quarterback. He was a quarterback. <laughs> well, if you look around the OUA, the number of coaches that have Western um, you know, lineage yeah. is incredible. Yeah, it you really know? is. Well, next week at Queens, following week here when yeah. Waterloo comes to town, we'll and the final game with Windsor. Windsor. All former, yeah. former, uh, Windsor, our former Western coaches. Well, that Windsor Lancer program has, has certainly been turned around. It really has. You know, I think Windsor's at York today, Pete. And I'll just, Windsor, of course, had, um, yeah, Windsor's at York this afternoon. And Windsor had that big opening win down in Windsor with Queens coming yeah. into town. And that was a heavyweight battle. Big victory for the Lancers. The yeah, Lancers will be here in the last game of the season for us. Yeah, what's that, October 4th or 5th? I I'm, think somewhere we, in there. Yeah, we can look that up for you. We have it somewhere here. But got to remember, there's 11 teams in the OUA. Every team has a bye week. And um, it's always kind of crazy when your bye week falls. Guelph's bye week falls the final week of the season. So you have to hope they're in a playoff position. So that week they can sit back, get rested, get healthy. All right, here we go. Kickoff is coming over here. Looks like uh, Simon Guerin maybe with it on the near side. He's going to try to make a man miss and is unable to do so. Good tackle there. Kyle Simon Guerin gets the ball Braxton back. Braxton Peters, what a yeah. tackle. Textbook gets the ball out to about the 23-yard line, and that's where the Griffins' offense will begin under the tutelage of Tristan Abood. And Pete, this MAC um, special teams have been solid today. Yeah. You look at the first three Guelph drives this afternoon here in the second half, all starting their end of the field under the 25 yard line. Pretty impressive. Four receivers out to the right, one lone setback, and one receiver out here to the left. And that lone setback is Caleb Sargent at arms who gets the ball, makes one, and just got tripped up, John. Otherwise, he would have busted it. For sure, Pete. I'm not sure who got an arm in there to bring him down as he found a seam to the right. And we'll take a look at the replay. Look at this. It was just a shoestring tackle right Number there. 17, wow. credit Anthony Stestanovic. Nice play. Big play here, Sean, second and six. Griffin's trying to manage to uh, give their defense a little bit of a rest. 
Marauders want to give that ball right back to their offense. Here we go, Abood back to pass, looking, steps up. He's throwing it long and deep out here, hadn't covered well. And Beautiful. we got a late flag. And let's see, it's Pete, uh, a lot of Arsenal. hand play yeah. from 28. Isaiah Shields, so yeah. we'll see what, the call, see what the call is. And the Marauders think it's offensive pass interference. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Oh, my. The head coach Pete, is not happy with that. Pete, there is just yeah. a lot of hand play yeah, there, there going on, and here we'll get a good look at it. Watch Abood step up in the pocket, avoid the sack, and look throw this, this ball long and deep. What a great shot, gang. And right there. Well, he did get a hand yeah. underneath at the end and prevented the second arm from going up, but a lot of hand play on both players. And that's a brave call in front of the Mac yeah, bench. It certainly is, and that's a huge first down for these Griffins. And they turn, fake the handoff. Good block, Abood steps up, and he's going to go for a run. He's got a first down and more. Sean, he's all the way to the 51 of the McMaster Marauders. Didn't Tristan Abood. He didn't slide, Pete. He <laughs> sort of took a rolling hip shot there. Tristan Abood, great decision-making. And... Uh, Boy, what, what Again, a, a nice saving tackle See at the back by Sargent. Great pocket awareness there. All right, first down, Griffins. Take the approach. Four receivers out to the right, two to the left. The boot looks like he might be changing the play. Look at Caleb. So Back to pass. Looking, a boot steps up, moves into the pocket. He's going to go for a run again. Look at him go. And whammo! Tristan Abood is to the 30, the 25, and out of bounds at the 24. Sean, a running back in Oh, fork. my. We don't have enough running backs oh, on oh, Guelph. Oh. And taking a page oh. from the Marshall McCray book. And Marshall's coming into and the they game slide to give Abood. Watch this, folks. I want to see who he lowers the shoulder against. Oh, my, 23. Peter. That is Drake Bodie, and yeah. Drake said, oh, man. What Tristan a play. Abood. Quite the scamper. And we got kind of a, well, kind of a official's timeout here. Or was that the end of the third no, quarter? No, no, we're good. Yeah. Unless we missed a oh, we might have missed penalty, penalty or here. something. Yeah. We didn't. Yeah, I think we did. Well, something happened. But it's coming all the way back. Boy, that was quite a game. It's still coming back. No, I think that was the end of the quarter, oh, Pete. Our bad. Be. They have a yeah. bit of a problem with yeah. the clock. Okay, there And now we go. they're running the clock down. Yeah. Our, uh, we like to apologize yes. to Tristan Abood's family who yes. said, what? And all these, I, you know, I, I have to lean out over to see the, the score clock, although I should look down at the screen here. Yeah. I'll get this figured out, folks. Only been doing it for 11 years. <laughs> Anyhow, it's going to be first down. The uh, are approaching the red zone. It's on the 24-yard line of the Marauders, and we are now in the fourth quarter, and it's 21-17. And Mr. Moynihan, this is a key possession uh, because uh, you know the Marauders just went down and scored. For sure, Pete. And I want to give a real quick shout out to my neighbors. Val, Peter, and Herschel watching the game back in London today. That Herschel's named after the great Herschel Walker. I believe, I believe so. Yes. They're big Georgia football oh, fans. They're Maddie big Stafford. football fans. Yeah. And uh, really enjoy the game. They'll be with us in a All couple right, weeks. Here's pitch play out here. Getting to ruin and hurdling people is number 23, Donovan Malloy. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. Um, Johan Shimbalanga had a shot at him. But he ran over Shimbalanga. Watch this, folks. This is the power of Loy right here. Boom. Good gain of five, second and five. Ball now into the red zone at the 19-yard line. Marauders are trying to hold him up. The Griffins are trying to answer that Marauder touchdown. Four receiver, three out to the uh, left. No With one here to the right. Rolling right. Going to throw it and brought down. What a defensive play there by number 97, Pete Malik Bolt. And I think he wanted Donovan Malloy out of the backfield. 
just couldn't, couldn't get, get him it. the ball. Yeah. Big play by. Well, you watch Malloy makes a chip here. Yeah. And then he is ready to yes. go. And Abood could not maintain his bound. There's a good shot of Malik Bolt, B O U L T. Malik, don't call me Usain Bolt, three time gold medalist <laughs> in the 100 meters. All right. Big play by Bolt there. 34 yarder coming at you by Benjamin Lane. Let's see if it can. Uh, Make it. Low snap. The kick is up, and it is wide, wide right. No oh, good. And they're going to try to bring it out, and they are going to get it out. And that ball is going to come to the 20-yard line. So a key miss, and the score remains 21-17. I was going to say that made it a would have made it a seven-point bolt. Yeah, Pete, big miss there, <laughs> especially after Lake hit a 52-yarder yeah, earlier. Incredible. You got an injured Griffin over there. We'll get you the name and uh, number momentarily. Big number 99. That's Tumi Adin Adini, I think. Adenye? A D E N I Y I. Adenye, I'm going to go with. My apologies for I'm mispronouncing it, but he is injured. Boy, that, was, that was quite a run out there, Sean, by Everett Reed to get that ball out of the end zone. He ran about 40 yards to get it out to the uh, four-yard line, which brought it out to the 20. Pete, update from Laurier. 31 to 9, Laurier. Wow. A stunner in OUA football. It certainly is. My goodness, 17. They had two touchdowns to Western's one so far in the second half. Here, we have only had one touchdown, and that's the Marauders. And they've cut the lead to four, and uh, we are in the fourth quarter. So this is going to be a uh, interesting 13 minutes and 33 seconds, a real test. It's a nice round of applause as Adenye heads off. Pete, and without a doubt, we're going to need, Guelph is going to need a couple of big defensive stops. Yeah. So it's really what this game, the guys in the middle, with Manzi, Campbell, Larry, Mortuzo's up on the corner. Going to need a big, big stop. Keegan Hall at the quarterback. He's got nobody. Here's the big pass. Right side. Sack Camino. Oh, what a play. Number 91, Robert Keyes Wilson. Oh, they had nobody in the backfield, Sean. And you can see what a what huge a play. defensive play. Watch this. Number 91. I have missed saying Sacamino, folks, and I've said it five times today. Watch this. It is just nobody blocks him. And uh, really, Hall doesn't have a chance, does he? He really doesn't, Pete. All right, it's second and 18, Sean. He's Ball Wilson. Out. Way back. You're going to have to watch the screen or the short pass. There's the screen pass. And brought down almost. The ball's fumbled. Oh, no, they're saying it's down. Okay. He, was, he was definitely yeah. down. But is that what? is that big Josh Campbell again? again. Number, oh. Or is that we'll get a number. He's walking off there, Pete. Yeah, let's see. The, well, we're let's see the Campbell the or Wood Manzi. Yeah. Let's it's see. either 96 or 98, Pete. But what a big. Huge. And look at now. Uh, McMack is forced to punt from their own goal line. And. Uh, Oh, Mortuzu had in there, too, trying to get his hand to cause And they uh, give up a couple points, Pete. Yeah. Yep, they'll uh, give up the safety, which makes the score 23 to 17. Bring this ball down to this end of the field. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, you know, if you're Coach Syria, you want to say, listen, guys, let's go on about an eight-minute drive and get a touchdown. We talked about, you know, uh, Coach uh, Patasic said, hey, time of possession to him is the key to this game. You know, in that first half, Pete, Guelph had the ball for 18 minutes. Mack had it for 12 yeah, minutes. So you're you winning go. time of possession. Yeah. And they led at the end of the first half. You so. know, it's. All right. Ball's at the 35 as John Denver lets us know that country roads do take us home. And let's see. Good shot of Matt Barry over there, the defensive coordinator. His There's defense a, did the job. Marshall McCray's in the okay. game, Pete. 
Along with Isaiah Smith, they turn, they hand the ball. No, McCray's going to keep it, and he's going to be brought down. A swarming Marauder defense causes the sack, and it's going to be second and long here. Good defensive play there by number 23, Drake Bodie. You see, they and I tell slow you, developing play. They Nobody bit on Isaiah Smith getting the ball. No one did. You're right, yeah. Pete. They really... <coughs> All in all, they've really had Marshall wrapped up today. Yep. Monroe Corniff, Corniff heading in motion out to the left now. McCray stays in a quarterback. There's an offside on Guelph. And McCray is going to run, and he looks like he's going to get a first down. But, folks, this is coming back. He's still up on his feet. He didn't get to the first down. It'll be interesting to see if they decline this, Sean. Because it'll make it third and about two. two. And uh, let's see, are they going to make it uh, second and 16 or third and two? Well, yeah, I got to believe Guelph would punt the ball from here, yeah, Pete, in a one-score game. Yeah, especially after your defense just made uh, two really good plays against. Let's see what the call is. So I think they'll. Lily. Really. Okay, we have an injured Marauder on the far side there. I believe the number ends in six. I think defensive lineman, is that 96 over there? It must be 96 feet. Yeah. 86 is Nicholas Adair. Yeah, Mitch Price. That's 96. Injured. Mitch, a fourth year student. Yeah, there he is. Big fella. Making his way to the sidelines. Gardero out to punt. Back deep in the Marauders, standing in and around their 26 and 25 yard line, respectively. And let's see what kind of punt Gardero can get away. He's got it. And a solid punt. Ball is going to be picked up and brought down. A fine defensive play or special teams play there. Number, number 33. 33, Pete. Yeah, that and is we have Maddox not, Martin. We have not called his name a no. lot in the past, but Maddox Martin, Great special linebacker, 5'11", has really had a solid game. Really, no game. He hung on for dear life there. Pete, he's a second-year kid Trying to out of right here in Guelph. Anyhow, here come the Marauders. They have the ball. They trail by six. They have the ball on their own 29-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, one setback. They hand the ball off up the middle, and a good gain of about four, maybe five yards. We haven't seen a lot of the running game Especially today. right up the middle, Pete, yeah. and a really good push. That was number 27 with the ball. There Ten. isn't a 27 on my sheet. Yeah, I, I don't see that. 24 uh, to... Uh, 23-17 with 10-29 to go here in the third quarter. Peter Cobb along with Sean Patrick Moynihan. This is Guelph Griffin football from beautiful Alumni Stadium in the Royal City. Marauders trying to claw their way back. Back to pass. Got a bit of a rush and getting away and no shock at me, no! Look at that! Number 99 to me again. And that second and six, Pete, a big sack. Likely forcing Mac to punt the ball. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, this is look at this. The initial. I think that was Josh Campbell with the initial. Look at him on oh, the ground. What a play. <laughs> I mean is that 98 or might have been Wood Manzi yeah. in on that look too. Look at Keegan Hall. He is so frustrated. He says, give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Good shot of him coming off. The Marauders are going to have to punt it away. Oh, oh almost I a thought block. that was blocked, Pete. And over the shoulder. Oh, Look what, out. That's what, trouble. What, what? What? That's trouble. And going to pick it up and try to get to the outside. And getting to the outside and now getting a little bit of room. And at least getting out to the 15-yard line, that was almost Pete, that disaster. That looked like disaster. First of all, the punt is almost blocked, but credit to Kid. Guthrie Guth showed the courage of a lion there. 
to uh, say, hey, I'm gonna see, watch this, folks. He lets it go, and then he kind of hesitates, gets his bearing, doesn't panic, looks, says, all right, I'm gonna pick it up and come to the right. Binks, 84 has a shot on him. I really thought number four, four right here. Couldn't get him. He went that, wide yeah, right. That allowed uh, good block there by uh, Gianni Green, number four, that allowed... Uh, Pete Horvath barely got, barely got that punt off, but it was his best punt of the day. Boot Here's Tristan Aboud. Turn, hand off, we got a flag on the play, and good defense there. Let's see what the flag's all about. The referee threw it. I wonder if that's gonna be illegal motion. And we shall see. Oh, offside on uh, McMaster, so it's going to be first and five. That's a big break for yes, Guelph, Pete, because they've started three drives. They've started three drives today with a penalty. It puts you in such a hole. Now, first and five, and uh, the penalty uh, infraction call on number one, Ethan Stewart, the defensive back, who lined up offside. A boot of three receivers out to the left. One set back, and one receiver out here to the right. Boots got the ball, turns, hands it off, cutting up the middle, spinning, still churning the legs, first down and more. I believe that it's might have Donovan been Malloy, Malloy. Pete. Oh boy, yeah. number 23, he is Mr. Excitement. And Pete, if we see on the replay, it's all about yards after contact yeah, for that. this kid. He does not quit. Look at Masterson downfield. He's second level throwing blocks. Well done. Huge shout alignment. out again to the O-line. Yeah. They have really been fantastic today. All right, first down ball at the 35 yard line of the Griffins. Back to pass, fake the handoff, throw in the middle and it was a little behind Arson, Arsenal. And uh, very unfortunate, Pete. He, <laughs> he was open. Abood knows it. Yeah. All right, second How and big long. would that have been? Oh, man. You can take a look on the replay. Lots of time. Yeah, thrown just a tad behind him. Arsenal couldn't bring it in. 8.22 to go. 23-17. Griffins have the lead and the ball. Second and long. Out here to the near side is Jacob Tessier. Two receivers to the right. Three to the left. One setback. Abood runs the hesitation play. Now has the ball. Throwing out of the flat, trying to get uh, and break a tackle and doing so and getting a first down. Are you kidding me, Tessier? Wow. High tackle, Pete, but oh, man. again, this has really been this Guelph offense today. Yards after contact yeah. is impressive. John, I can't tell you, if he makes the initial tackle and goes down where he's at, we're punting the ball away. For sure. Now we keep it. It's first down. The ball is on the 46-yard line, 47 now. And the Griffiths continue. We got two players. Tessier is down, and we have a Marauder on the near side here, too. There's um, yes. number 88, Jared Tessier. Looks like he might have, you know, have a cramp or something. But he made a heck of a play. Let's watch. Uh, hope we can get that replay um, as we're looking at the injured marauder there. Yeah, that's number 96, yeah. well, Mitch watch this, Price. Folks. This is what I call, you know, this is, you, you talk about yak yards after the catch, right there. It's, you're pumping the ball. Oh no, I am gonna fight, keep going, and stumble forward for the first down. Oh, well done, Remarkable. All right. So it win, that wins you ball games, It really Peter. does. I mean, uh, now 7.51, clock has stopped, but the Griffins have first down. And they've got, you know, pretty good field position. Two receivers to the left, two out here to the right. One setback. Abood surveying the situation. Got the ball, back to pass. Look, throws across the middle. That ball is caught. And is that Arsenal? Pete, and that's identical play from the other yeah, side. That it is. And Willem Arsenal. Yeah, what wait. a game he's put together. And now the ball deep, deeper into McMaster territory, all the way to their 47-yard line, Sean. Arsenal had four catches in the first half, Pete. He's had multiple in this half. 
We need a nice, exciting uh, run by ha, Donovan, Donovan Malloy. Malloy. Well, we need a scamper from Donovan Malloy. Well, 23 is the lone setback. Let's see what happens here. Abood's got the ball. He turns. He hands it to Malloy. Tries to make a couple miss, and he's going backwards. Good defense there. That time by number 23, Drake Bodie. Yeah, he Bodie made a way. really great play there, Pete. And so much for me calling the plays on a scamper by Malloy. Loss of three, Sean. Yeah, it, it looked like Abood and Molloy ran into each other in the backfield there and wasn't a smooth handoff. Anyhow, it's going to be second down and 13. Ball at the 50-yard line of the Marauders. Abood, back to pass, looking. Throws a screen over the middle, trying to get it over, and they're going to get, oh, back the loss of yardage plus a couple more, and it's going to be third down. And Third down and th maybe three, Pete? No, and I'm going to say about seven, Sean, uh, where they're marking it because they got to get a first down down to the 32-yard line, and the ball's at the 43. Okay, yeah. Pete, you're right. But you're dead on. My question is, are we going field goal or punt? I think we're punting. Yeah, okay, because we, we did see a 53-yarder earlier by Mr. Lane, but he did miss in this direction. And a little win right now yeah. be kicking into the win. Gardero. He's going to run it, and he's going to get a first down, maybe, Sean. He does. Wow, Nicholas Gardero. He saw there was nobody over here to the right. What a play by Gardero. Wow, Pete, two weeks <laughs> in a row. Look at this, folks. He's looking, and he says, hold it. I'm going to take off and run. There's nobody over here. And there's Pete. one guy, that, and he runs right into him, yeah. but he's got the first down, and that was uh, Victor Bodie. And Pete, for a moment, he took a step inside, and I thought maybe he yeah. should just directly head to that uh, sideline. But does not matter. A big first wow. down, and what a gutsy call. Ball at the 35-yard 30, <laughs> line, the turn, the handoff. Trying to get to the outside, breaking inside, and here goes... And that is number 27, Sean Caleb Sargent. And he's all the way to the 11-yard line. And Caleb Pete, Sargent. The uh, Mac bench might be a little upset with a hold there, as you can see on the play coming around the corner. Oh, but yeah. it's a, you watch yeah. coming up. Okay, maybe we didn't catch it. But yeah. anyways, there was a little bit of a grab. But all for naught, Caleb Sargent. Sargent. The three-headed monster in the wow. backfield. Sergeant Smith and Malloy. My goodness. Here we go. Abood. I think it's McCray in the game, Oh, McCray, Pete. yes. And, oh, the pitch. And working his way inside and turning to the one-yard line. Donovan Malloy. And, Pete, I believe it'll Sergeant, be enough sorry. for a first down. Caleb Sargent. You remember last week uh, when we talked to the coaches, we asked them who will surprise yeah. us, and they said, "Look out for number 27, Caleb Sargent." Sergeant at arms, Watch and we pitch. got a little pitch here. Look at that! Oh, but Sargent man. does make a great, great deke here. But you know, Marsha McCray makes that play because he's a threat to run shot. Absolutely, gotta, Pete! Tremendous decoy. Kept him on us. Yeah, but I do believe it's McCray time, Pete. Well, let's see. You said he scored a touchdown in every game he's played. Let's see. He fakes. He runs. He's up the middle. He jumps, and he scores! Touchdown, Griffins! 12 games in a row. The Marshall has scored again. Unbelievable, Pete. He's played 12 games in wow. a Griffin uniform, and he gets it done. But, Pete, I, something tells me we will talk about that fake punt for quite a while. I, Scores 29-17. That's a 12-point lead with the extra point to come. We do have uh, Griffin down. Look at McCray leaping. Boy, a lot like the great Greg Joy. In Montreal yeah. Olympics, that? though, I Silver believe. Silver medal. On the high jump. He beat Dwight Stones. Absolutely. Come on. That was something. 
or I should say Derek Druin, who's one of he's the greatest high jumper this country ever had. history from Corona, Ontario. Oh, yeah, just up the road. One in it. Brazil. Well, you wore his gold medal. Well, Sean. he asked me to wear it. He oh, said, "Sean, right. yeah, I like to <laughs> let you wear my gold medal." I presented. I said this was the official presentation. Yeah. They're a lovely family, the Druins. Yeah. His sister uh, sisters are super athletes too. And Pete, you know, just for our, our listeners, we used to have a radio show. Yeah. We got to know the Druin family. Oh man! Uh, we followed him. I think he was at Indiana. He went to. Yes, he did. And um, uh, just a tremendous athlete, and captured a gold medal. And recently in Paris, was awarded, I believe, a silver medal. Yeah, from London, from, because, from the yeah. London Olympics because of a disqualification. So. Um, Hey. This, this is key here. This is Mitchell uh, Schessinger, another one of our super offensive linemen. Let's, he's walking off under his own power, which is a great sign. Um, here we go. Extra point coming, Sean. They're going for no, two. They're Pete. going for two. And that's Mr. Abood back in the lineup. Four receivers to the left. Let's see how they run this. Here comes the motion to the right. Now back in front. And we got a penalty and let's see what the call is oh. that might change to uh, that might change to a point extra now point. although I still see a boot out there and I see a, a griffin down on a knee and I wonder if that's Josh is Josh Maganag Masnaji M-A-S Masnaji Nudgy, I guess. Pete, we have a second here. We've talked about the O-line. We've met some of the parents before the game. But uh, Daniel Hakavar, um, Spencer Masterson, Ethan Pyle, the oh, center, has man. been. And he's a uh, captain. Yeah. Um, he's like Frank Wright now. Schechenegger has been outstanding. And Thomas Barakas, just first class. And um, don't really get the credit. Four games into the OUHA season. There's uh, Masnaji, number 41, walking off. There was a good shot there they had of the huddle. The Tessier boys, Jared and Jacob, standing next to each other, 88-17. That was a great shot. I'm assuming they're brothers. You know, I'm just, you never know. I think it'd be a safe bet, yeah. wouldn't you? Jared and Jacob, yeah. Sure. I think so. Anyhow, uh, the ball is placed at the 10-yard line after the motion penalty. And uh, Abood stays out there. They continue to go for two. 29-17. Uh, yeah, hmm. I guess 13 doesn't really make, this makes it a two-touchdown game. Let's see if they can convert. Back to pass. Looking, looking, throwing into the middle of the field. That ball is intercepted. Watch out. He can run it back. He's got uh, a couple of blockers out there and is knocked out of bounds. And oh, wow. We have a flag. Oh wow, Pete! That's uh, to me that's that's no, a stunner, don't, don't you think? Yeah, I don't he think he threw the ball a... at him after he went out of bounds. Oh, okay. You can take a look here. Point difference. It is a two-score game. 3.51 to go. The Marauders are going to get the ball back. And in uh, OUA uh, football, folks, that's a lifetime. Lots can happen in three minutes. We saw what happened in a minute and ten seconds before halftime. The uh, Griffin scored back-to-back -back touchdowns. All right, Benjamin Lane kicks it off. High and deep, going to be picked up around the 10, 11-yard line. 
Running to the right, back into the middle, and good defense. Not good. much there, yeah. Pete. <laughs> good special 27 play. in on the tackle. Long Caleb long. Sargent, he's decided to do a little bit of everything today. And this guy too. And Nicholas two. Merton. Yep. Matron. Nicholas Matron, a linebacker. Yep. Getting uh, a taste. Well, here we go. The Marauders had the ball at their own 25 yard line. They trail by the score of 29-17. There's 3.38 to go, and here they come. They roll right, and we got a flag on the play. Looking, 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 and look out. He's taking off and rolling over and making sure there was no penalty there. Good play now, by Maddox Pete, Martin. you would think with him rolling out, that penalty is gonna be a hole, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah it, it was thrown so early. Either that, yeah, illegal procedure. Okay. Yeah, moving back five. So it's going to be first and 15 now. And boy, that's not something you want to have happen. That no. must just drive a coach crazy, eh, Pete? That's just lining up, and he's not on the line. Well, Dylan Holmes, Max. Uh, Max Holmes out there on that deep. Dylan Todd on that defensive line. Seeing some time. Here comes a blitz from the outside. Throwing a ball, throwing across the middle, and good catch and run. And a nice taco, Pete. Yeah. Slaughter came in from the side. And that, uh, Sean, I believe, was Nicholas Adair, who's been pretty quiet. Yeah, today. since that touchdown yeah. pass in the first, early in the first quarter. Pete, you have to worry about here. fatigue. Yeah. Big first down. Ball now at the 40-yard line. Don't know what the uh, kind of delay is here. I saw Keegan Hall come to the sideline. Yeah, I, I just, we're going to have to get a clarification. I just don't understand that. Yeah. Time clock hasn't started. It's whistled in now as he comes back to the all right, back Huddle. to pass. Look, he's got all kinds of time. Throws across the middle. Pop the ball's hot moves, and it's incomplete. Oh, what a hit by Martin. Uh, nice call <laughs> by the official. Yeah. Second down and 10, and boy, those crossing patterns, you better be Look aware. Look at this, Pete, Watch on this. the replay. Yeah, Martin really lays just a shoulder. He's had a tremendous yeah. game, Pete. He has not had a lot of... Um, a lot of playing time in the past. Maddox Martin coming good. alive. Adair Is he the next John Rush? Whoa, wouldn't that be nice? All right, big play here for the Marauders. Second down and 10, a uh, bad snap, back to pass. Looking, throws across the middle, got a man open. It's Adair, and he's got a first down, and he's into Griffin territory all the way to the 50. And we do have Jackson Cooling down for the Marauders, the Heat. Fatigue getting in. You see a bad snap, but boy, what a nice pass there. And man, Adair, I mentioned how quiet all of a sudden he's coming to life here. That's Ofakuyu down for Guelph, Pete. You got to wonder yeah. about just the fatigue and the heat. Yeah. 2.36 to go. McMaster needs a touchdown and they need to get the ball again. The Griffins are going to try their best to keep them out of the end zone. They have the ball at the 50-yard line of the Griffins. There's 2.36 to go. And that's the beauty of uh, this sport, Sean. You know, if this was an NFL game, if the op offense gets the ball, you can take in the knee. Taking the knee and get into victory formation with, like, two minutes to go. Yep. Three down football just has so many things to like about it, if you ask me, Pete. It the ball is turned over a ton of time. Flipping the field with a good punt game is significant. Ofuku heading off Kobe and coming this side is number two, Jackson Cooling. Good to see them walking off under their own power. The Marauders have first down. The tip of the nose of the ball at the 50-yard line. This crowd sitting on their hands, Pete. Some anxiousness. Guelph trying to close it out. 233 left, as you said. All right, back to pass. Hall looking, goes across the middle again. 
And a fine tackle there. That's textbook tackling by Martin. Boy, he has come to life here, number Maddox, 33. Martin. Double M. Getting a lot of time, yeah. Pete, at the linebacker position. And you can see oh, he Oh, hurry up offense. In. They're going to try to get uh, Guelph in an illegal substitution. Oh, he got him off the field in time. Back to pass again. Hurry up offense. Look out. Being chased in. He throws the ball. Is that going to be a pass or a fumble? Let's see. They're waiting to see what the call is. Intentional That's been grounding. Intentional grounding, Pete. Yeah. He was in the clutch. And... Um, Boy, in the excitement, all that, I did not get the yeah. player who closed in on him. But, geez, Caleb Keegan Hall took another whack. Yes, he did. And this he, man, this young man has been oh, nothing short of spectacular he today. He really has. You can see here the call being made. That's lost it down, too, I believe. I believe. down and Sean about oh I'm going to take a look here 18. Pete on the replay yeah. who is it again oh is that Eunice Larry in there it is oh <laughs> Larry <laughs> and, and number 46, 46 of course Brandon Farigo. Farigo this is a big play in this ball game it's third down back to pass looking looking throwing across the middle he's got to go a mile to get the first down he does it he's short and, and the Guelph Griffins take over and Pete it's another tackle by the torpedo Anthony Mortuzo close it out ball turned over and I'll tell you that sack and intentional, intentional ground significant well look where the ball is now for these uh, Griffins they've got it at their own 48 yard line their offense comes back out on the field. I'm telling you, Eunice Larry is, and I've said it before, he's the Micah Parsons of the OUA. This kid can play any position, defensive line, linebacker. As I said, put him at safety. He is a threat. Marshall right. McCray in. Marshall McCray Pete. in. They try to eat some clock. They turn. The free flicker. Back to pass. He heaves it downfield. And it is almost intercepted. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. Pete, that's, a, that's a hard one to understand. If that ball's intercepted there, yeah. that puts Mack right back in the ball game. I love the creativity, yeah. but that's Barbie. That's uh, risky. The intended. They, he had two guys back there, too. Watch this, folks. And this is as far as Marshall McCray can throw it. He steps back and launches it. Downfield, and you can see he's well covered. Risky. Yeah, second down and 10. McCray got it, turns, makes the handoff, keeps it himself, and Marshall McCray is off and running. Sean Ferre, first down. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my oh. goodness, folks. I think everybody knew it was coming, Pete, but you can just not tackle that it, it, kid, that, that young man. Yeah. Like Marshall McCray, you know it's something, and you said it. You know it's coming, and I still can't stop it. For sure. Wow, watch this move right here. Watch this move right there. Boom. And then poor 23 says, where are you going? It's like Barry Sanders. I'm telling you. All right, big first down. Now into McMaster territory. McCray, still the quarterback, turns, hands the ball off. And... Gaining about two, maybe three yards. Isaiah Smith. Isaiah Smith. They're really being cautious with him, you know, For coming sure, off Pete. that injury. The job he's done today on, on pass protection has been outstanding. Even this play, the, here we go, up the middle. Looking forward to that yeah. young man finding his footage oh, because, boy. as we, we said earlier, oh. Pete, sat out an entire season with an injury. Got hurt literally on the third play of the game last year yeah well it's second down and eight sean and uh you can see they really do a great job of recognizing all the groups that support yeah uh, and pete we football. gotta remind our 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 viewers we're going to be back in two weeks when waterloo comes into town for homecoming we're bringing the wives we're bringing a big team of people down Oh, my, it's going to be some celebration here. Homecoming here at Guelph is just fantastic. Um, 
McMaster used a timeout there, Sean. Second down and eight now. McCray still the quarterback. He looks, fakes the pitch, looks, tries to get outside, manages two. Going to make one, maybe two miss, and then hang on to that ball, Marshall. And he gets thrown down and uh, managed to gain maybe a yard. It's going to be third down. He did take 10 seconds, nine yeah. seconds off the clock beat, if nothing else. You can see Marshall, boy, I'm going to tell you what, poor number 44, Greg Thomas said. It was a timeout in Master again, I think, to stop the clock with 1.23 to go. Third and six. And they're saying, hey, be aware, Nicholas Gardero turned the game around with a fake punt. We'll try to get that Western yeah. score one more time for our huge listening audience. Gardero. Going to punt. He's standing on his own 52-yard line. Gets the ball. Punts it. Heading over towards the sideline and out of bounds. And let's see where it's marked. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea 15 at all. 15-yard line. And McMaster must score twice. They have a minute nine to do it. And I think, Sean, are they down to one timeout? They are down to no timeouts. So, and Pete, they, as we set up here at Wilfrid Laurier University, Laurier 40. Wow, it's a streak over, Western Sean. 22. Oh. It looks like that streak of 30 consecutive wins in the OUA by Western might be coming to an end. I think there's about four minutes left oh, in that well game. That's, there's time, 22 but possible, but maybe highly unlikely. Back to pass, looking at Sacramento! One more time! Pete, 90. Dylan Todd! Oh, Nelly. And Pete, that might be the first time we've ever called Dylan Todd's. Oh. Now look at him, just bull rushes. And while you're at it, why don't we just pull a helmet off the quarterback? Yeah, and he, you know what? You can see uh, we got a flag on the play, and I, I don't know if the penalty is on... Uh, Keegan uh, Hall, just you can just see the frustration here, and let's see what the discussion is. Well, Pete, last year Guelph really struggled in the sack area. Oh, we man. saw it this year. I'm not sure how many they've had today. I'm thinking at least four. Oh, wow, I've, I've um, said it a few times. That is a huge difference. You know, really, congratulations. Here we too. go, Sean. Let's see what the call is. Half the distance to the goal. Well, 115 to go. It's going to be second down and 21, Sean. So you can just see these uh, Griffin defensive line are just pinning their ears back. All right, back, they hand the ball off, and a nice run coming out to the side and getting at least some breathing room there. Is, uh, is that number 84, Sean? It's Jake. 34, I 34. believe, Pete. And that's, that is Micah Deshane. That's Deshane. I should have guessed that, yeah. Brought down by Anthony, the torpedo, torpedo. Martuzzi. All right, here's the ball game, Sean. It's third and 11. And back to pass, looking, 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 throwing to the right. The ball is caught and brought down immediately, short of the first down. And uh, I think, it, see where that ball is marked. That's Nicholas Adair with the catch. Is it a first? It is a first down. My by, apologies. By a yard, wow. Pete. I thought it was short. Anyhow, clock 58 seconds. Back to pass again, looking, 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 throwing to the sideline, and uh, incomplete. That'll stop the clock at second and 10, 52 seconds to go. Pete Nathaniel Slaughter with the coverage out there in the, on the side. No room to go. Yeah, the uh, Marauders need a touchdown, and then they got to get the ball back again as they trail uh, by 12 here, 29-17. Second down and 10. 
Keegan Hall. The cheerleaders are rocking it out, Pete. The stadium is alive. Guelph can sense victory. Well, let's see. Here we go. They run it back to pass, looking, throwing. Ball is caught. And Mortuzo with a fine tackle. Boy, you're not going to get away from Anthony. That's for darn sure. For sure, Pete. He has, he has chalked up a ton of tackles today. 48 seconds to go. Ball now at the 37-yard line of the Marauders. They've come from and back to pass looking. The ball thrown, and it is caught, I believe. That's a dare again, Pete. Yeah. And he's coming up limping a bit, but he does manage to get the ball out to the 47-yard line. Here's a good shot of it. This Boy, Adair we, has yeah. great hands. We've seen it a couple times today. Yeah, we've had uh, great camera work by our crew today. Yeah, special thanks to our crew. Here we go again, Pete. Throwing that ball out into the flats, and what a catch. Oh, my God. Adair God-dead. again, Pete. You know, he, he would, looked like he was hurt, but he made a stretching, leaping grab over there. See him? You can see he's For sure. running out of gas, but still fighting. The ball now at the 52-yard line of the Marauders. And Adair, I think that's Adair in the far far side of the field is down. Yeah, they're calling for the uh, medical staff, the referee making the call, trying to get Adair. Cramps, it looks like something. Pete, as he tries to stretch it out. 33.7 seconds to go, Sean. The ball at the 50 two-yard line. Stranger things have happened. Sure. You remember sure. we were sitting here and it looked like a sure defeat, but Harrison Bagayogo <laughs> blocked up punt. punt. That was a playoff game, Pete. It was, oh it was incredible. God. I almost fell out of the booth. You know, today, Guelph has not had Vishon Janusis, likely, I would say their number one receiver. Kane Stevenson, a real veteran. Um, just out, you know, missing two guys today, but boy, have people stepped up and been fantastic today for them. Again, the line play, both offensive line and defensive line. Coaches are going to be so happy. Hey, this kid's had a heck of a day. Yeah. Nicholas Adair. Yep, without question. Third year kid, he's in commerce. All right, second down, about six yards to go. Adair coming off the field. Like you said, he's just a heck of an athlete and gives it his all. We have witnessed that here today. Keegan Hall still at quarterback. Three receivers out right, two to the left. Hall, back to pass, fakes the handoff, gets outside, throws the ball across the middle. Oh, nice move made. And hustling out of bounds. Down to about the 39-yard line of the Griffins with Pete. about 25 seconds to go. Boy, Pete, and he beat number 48, Carter Islip. Yeah. It's the first time we've yeah, called Carter Carter's tried name. To, yeah, he oh, tried Carter to shot. Just you got to wrap him up, Carter. <laughs> got to get those arms around him. I know that's a big uh, big receiver in uh, Devontae Hudson. That's for sure. 18's a big kid. We're down to 25.6 seconds, Pete. First and 10. Ball at the 39 of the Griffins. Fake handoff. Hall gets to the outside under pressure. Strung out there and caught! Oh, my goodness. Is that Devontae? Is that uh, Devontae That's Hudson again? What a catch. Yeah. Kyle Simon Garen. He he tripped originally, stumbled going for the ball, got his hand on it. Great concentration by Hudson. By Hudson. Wow, look at that. Throwing it over, and then here. Boy, I'm going to nice tell you, play. Kyle Simon Guerin thought he might be going six yep. the other way. Which he has done once already this year. Okay, ball at the 20-yard line. 18 seconds, 18.8 seconds to go. The Marauders have marched their way down the field, trying to get to the outside and back to pass and underthrown and again hit. And Mortuzo was in on the tackle there. Absolutely good pressure. Both Mortuzo and I believe number six, yeah. Nathaniel Slaughter, both in on that play. Tackle. 
And you know, you can just see Keegan Hall is, he's like a prize fighter. He's been knocked down and he continues to get up. And what great discipline by both Mortuzo and yeah. Slaughter there. No Made the hit, rolled off. Second and 10, 12.8 seconds to go. Ball on the 20 yard line of the Griffins. McMaster needs two scores in 12 seconds. Back to pass, looking, thrown out to the side. It's caught and running it in for, no, just shy. Did not get in, I don't think. Down Boy, to about the one yard line. Kyle Simon Guerin. Yeah. And it's a great play, Pete. It forces them to have another play. Yeah. Again, they sent the house there. Well, I think McMaster was one short on That's offense. What, yes. We heard next door and uh, they did. They recognized it, but here we go. They marked the ball at the boat, the two yard line. This is interesting. Six seconds left in the game. Back to pass, looking, throwing on the flat, incomplete. We got a flag and it could be- Roughing uh, the yeah, passer. Roughing the passer. Looks like number 92, Kobe Okwu is gonna be charged with that. That's Brandon Farigo. Yeah, two point. We'll take a look at the replay here, Pete. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, Farigo. You know, he used his arms, eh? I, like, I, I like, don't know if yeah. I agree with the call, but I'm a homer, and that's all right. Yeah. But. Okay. Looks like just straight ahead, and there they go and get a touchdown. Point seven seconds left, Sean. Oh. Now number 57. We don't have a 57 on the Mac roster. Here he comes running off. He was celebrating like he won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Kid, you're still trailing. Okay, but anyway, Bud, no. you're gonna take a trip home and there'll be no talking on the bus. There you can see. Nice effort, number three, of course. That's uh, Berezi, yeah. the, the third down specialist. There's Horvat for the extra point. Ball is down, the kick is up, it is good. And with uh, .7 seconds to go, the score is 29-24. So, Sean, let's play this out. It's not over yet. But McMaster kicks an onside kick? They kick an onside kick and pick up the ball and run it in for a touchdown. That's it's the, the only play. Yeah. So um, unless this play results in someone picking up a ball and running it in, it's uh, there, even if they were to recover, I can't yeah. see them getting the ball back. I'm sure 0.7 seconds runs off the clock, but Guelph will have in their all hands team. Yeah. And it's an interesting rule here. It's the last person to touch the ball when it goes out of bounds. Yes. Well, here we go. The ball teed up at the 45 yard line. And look at here, here you go. You see the hands team, they got guys well over here yeah. to the right, all of them, you gotta remain. Or a penalty, Pete. Yeah. The game can't end on a penalty. Let's see what happens. Referee has blown the whistle. Here we go. Kick is high and in the air. And it is McMaster ball. We have a flag on the play. It's gonna be McMaster ball, Sean, and this is not over yet. No, no this is a crazy um, yeah. ruling. It's, um, you don't have to have possession, you just have yeah, to touch it. Touch it, let's see what What's this penalty is? Yeah, that's what I'm If wondering. it's a late hit here. Yeah, on Guelph for like a block against somebody. Um, let's see what happens. Referee's gonna let us know. Oh my. 
They're saying he touched the bounds out of yeah. bounds. Touched the ball out of bounds. And you can see Coach and Patasic yep. in it wanting an explanation. And the referee and Chief giving him that explanation. Steph Patasic, fine coach at oh, Mac. Yeah, he was so good with us oh, this morning. Had a great interview with you him. Know, we met him down near that wall of honor, and we encourage everybody, if you come to the next home game, uh, which is uh, homecoming, you want to uh, come and uh, see uh, see this wall of honor. Here's, Here's the, the replay. Play, Pete. What's this? He's out of bounds, they're saying. Yeah. He must have, his, when he took off to knock it out, he must have been out of bounds. That's what I'm assuming. There's lots of discussion going on uh, here. And watch, we're going to watch it again. The only thing I think is if, if the guy that swats it is out of bounds, when he, or, uh, when he takes off out of bounds to swat right here, that guy, if he took off out of bounds, then it's a, it's a penalty. Yeah. But if he was in bounds and swatted it out of bounds, it's it should be McMaster football. Okay, it looks like the field is cleared, and it is going to be Guelph football. Sean and the Griffins are going to go to three and one. And boy, did we talk about a huge victory as Tristan Abood takes a knee, and there you have it. The final score, the Guelph Griffins 29, the McMaster Marauders 24. Pete, Sean, any final what thoughts? a heavyweight My battle goodness. today. But, you know, again, it came down to Guelph with a couple of key drives, ate up the clock, and that defensive line, Wood Manzi, um, number 33, had maybe the game of his life today, Maddox Martin. Um, William just Arsenal. I William mean, Arsenal yeah. had a quality game catching the ball. Marshall McCray extends, extends that incredible streak. 12 games in a row with a rushing touchdown. Wow. And Guelph sets himself up at 3-1. and one. Mack, who no slouch, Pete, but now they fall to 1-3. and three. Yeah. Tough schedule, and I know Mack plays Western. Yeah. But Guelph should be very happy with this victory. And head coach Mark Sura and the defensive uh, Matt Berry, Donovan Carter, the assistant, uh, the associate head coach in special teams. And uh, let's go back, Pete, to that fake punt. Yeah. A key Nicholas point Gardero. in this game. It was. For a first down, I think it was like second and 13. It was an incredible play. And Guelph keeps the hometown fans super happy today, Pete. Big with a, win. With a and, big uh, win. Sean, we're going to throw it down to uh, Scotty Fraser and Justin Dunk for their post-game analysis. We'll see you at homecoming, folks.